Take a right turn up here. So you say you've been playing with this guy for a while, Elvis? Yeah, Mason. Tony has been doing an ongoing campaign with the same characters for like a year now, and I'm really invested. With the same characters? I thought you said your game ran out of players. Yeah, but I'm still in it, Paul. And Tony sort of has a DMPC that he plays as. Is he a big bad? It's sort of poor form to have a DMPC unless the GM is leading the party. Larry, shouldn't that be a GMPC? You know, game master player character instead of dungeon master? I'm not gonna get sucked into a pedantic argument with you about acronyms, Paul. We all know what I mean. Tony's characters aren't exactly supposed to be bad guys, but I got him to start playing with a system besides D&D, and he's been way into it. And you know, I just want to foster experimenting with stuff outside the mainstream. And, oh, this is, here's his house. But why'd we have to pick up the pizza? He's the host. Well, Tony's got different rules. It's his house and he GM, so we bring the food. I mean, I can see that. Most people don't want to run the game. It's too much work. Hey, Elvis! Elvis' is friends! I'm Tony! Good to meet you, Tony. I'm Mason. We brought you a pizza. Oh, pepperoni, my favorite. That's great. Come on in. I'm Paul. I really like the setting outline. You know, it reminded me a bit of a game I played with Elvis a while back. A lady choked on a peanut, and they escaped on a flying boat. Oh yeah, turn of the century diesel punk thing. Where magic powers the city lights. I think Elvis told me about that. I did. That's when Magic Tony started trying to mass produce magical lights to sell to people. Oh, that's right, because Magic Tony was a homebrew artificer before we changed systems. That That's right. Yeah, you were homebrewing everything. I was. This is so much better. Anyway, everybody, come sit down. My name is Lowry. I think I might already hate your game. Well, that's okay. You'll like it soon. I put a lot of thought into it. Help yourself to some pizza. Thank you, Tony. I will. I paid for this pizza. Lowry sometimes takes a little warming up, too. It, it's okay. I'm going to kill your DMPC. Okay, well, let's just go around the table real quick and establish everybody. I already know Elvis. He's playing a retired assassin and has already been working under one of the richest men in Sicilis. It's like a Mediterranean country. They grow grapes. All the other bodyguards died after you messed up a court case with an angry undead spirit. So your boss, Flor de Blasio, hired three new bodyguards on short notice. Our lawyer sucked. He wasn't really your lawyer. He was giving us legal counsel. Legally, he is. The first new guard is Mason. Who's your character? I'm Mason Five Swords. I'm the sixth son of a famous sword master who owned five magical swords. Each of my brothers was going to get one sword, leaving me with only a regular non-magic sword. So one night, I stole all six swords and fled my home. After that, I learned to fight while holding all six swords at once, so I could feel morally justified for my behavior. But I refused to acknowledge the sixth non-magical sword, Mason Five Swords. Oh, okay, cool. I dig it. How about Paul? But I've also got family issues. My parents are bitter divorcees who subjected me to a ridiculous custody battle. Both were soldiers who retired to be talented smiths and magical engineers who tried to curry my favor with powerful artifacts. My mother made me a shield that heals wounds and reflects force directed against it. My father made me a warhammer that pierces all armors and erodes confidence by striking bitterly at the heart. Mom was nicer, but Dad had more money, and I'm sure if I save the world or something, I'll live up to their expectations and they'll get back together. <sighs> That's cool. What's your dad's name? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Joe or something. I didn't think it would come up. Okay, I'll have to remember that. And how about Lowry? They call me the Sage Charlatan. At least if they know me. I've got tons of mechanical tricks up my sleeves and have traveled the world pretending to be able to levitate, see the future, and cast earthly magics that won't be evident for many seasons. I got this job because I lied on my resume, and I know there's not much chance of having to fight anyone in the course of ordinary guard duty. Okay, cool. Well, you guys have all signed on with a temporary contract to guard Fleur de Blasio as he makes a trip to a place called Pinball City. It's an uneventful trip on de Blasio's flying yacht, until, after a week of travel, you see a glorious silver city decorated in gold trimmings. It's suspended over the ocean on a small ball bearing about the size of a pinball, and the pinball is heavily decorated with complex magical sigils. It's customary to fly beneath it before docking, just to admire the craftsmanship and view the aura of magic emanating from it. After your tourist flyby, you land at a dock and everyone disembarks. So boss, Mr. de Blasio, you need us to carry luggage or anything? Oh no, thank you. I travel light. And besides, this is as much a vacation for my guards as it is for me. You know, Elvis, I was talking to my neighbor David. David again? It's not every day that your farmhands come back from the dead with a court subpoena, Mr. de Blasio. I did pretty well, considering the challenges. I think you're right, Elvis. 
The real problem was that, unlike David's guards who had equipment to fight the undead as a standard precaution, you were not prepared. That's why I'm going to shop for products that can ward off the undead. Oh. Oh, so you're going to buy new weapons for us? Because that'd be great. All I got left is this knife and my invisibility ring. Yes, that thing's obnoxious. But, but you know what I hear? There's a coliseum in the city where they show off and even let you test the products. I don't know what we'll find, but let's have a look. Sign up for a demo, maybe. Yeah. Okay, sure. Hey, Elvis, what exactly happened with this lawsuit you keep mentioning? Oh, it was a whole thing, Mason. The lawyer was a vampire who could hypnotize the jury. Two of my friends died. I don't think that was mentioned in the job application, Elvis. Well, I mean, it probably wouldn't happen again, Lowry. It's their fault for not asking. You should always do your due diligence. Any employer will ask for your references, but I bet you never thought to ask me for mine. But it sounds like all your employees are dead. Yes, and that is a massive red flag. Anyway, let's hop down to the Coliseum. I want to get there before sunset. You guys walk along the gold-laced streets of Pinball City behind de Blasio, and the entire trip is an absolute marvel. They have a complex aqueduct system with clean water running up and down hill, magic-lit street lights on every corner, the sewer gutters are made of marble. There's also a lot of greenery providing screens for noise pollution, including a few magical Culhart trees. Wait, there's gold circuitry fighting the flow of gravity across the city, and the sewer culverts are made of marble? Yeah, it's the world's wealthiest city. The Colhart trees are the more impressive note. They only grow on the island of Colhart normally. Okay, but it's marble. That's a soft stone. If you use it for water sewage, it's going to erode constantly. And what kind of taxes do they pay to have gold circuitry and all the infrastructure? It's a floating city, so they're obviously not importing the gold. They just replaced the marble. The Colhart trees are normally impossible to grow anywhere but Colhart. The Colhart trees are magical fictional trees, right? You could say the gutters are made of Colhart wood, and that'd be okay. Marble and water don't get along. That's their real things. This is just non-functional opulence. I think you're underestimating the significance of the Culhart trees. If they can make Culhart grow on this island, they can turn marble into sewer gutters. You see, Paul, the whole economy of Culhart would normally be supported... Culhart's a place, by the way. It would normally be supported by the export of Culhart wood. Once it's cut and dried in a kiln, it becomes the strongest steel. But it's a lot easier to work with. Plus, the trees are normally huge, like 20 stories tall. So you get a lot of materials from cutting down just a single tree. Before Pinball City, Colhart was the center of magical industry. And there's all these competing factions because Colhart was wiping out its own environment for the sake of production quotas. And there's tons of magical spirits that live in the woods who are angry about it. The thing is, you can also bind spirits into magical items, so there's a lot of incentive to mess with natural powers to get stronger equipment. At the expense that horrible demons tend to move in when there's no natural spirits to chase them away. Yeah, but Pinball City artificially summons both spirits and demons and deals in ethical contracting with them. So, spirit-infused equipment from Pinball City is a lot more cooperative with you than anything you get from Culhart. Yeah. So you see, Paul, marble being used for water drainage actually is less egregious than the fact that they're just growing their own sustainable Culhart trees. Because we have no reason to go to Culhart now. Oh. Although if you were real heroes, you'd go to Culhart just to stop their predatory industry leaders. So, Colhart and this place are the only ones who make this magical wood. Yes, but Pinball City has much better precision cutting tools. So if we destroyed Colhart's industry, we'd plunge Colhart into poverty, and then the only one making Colhart would be this place. No. Actually, I guess, maybe. Well, Colhart probably has import taxes or something. Actually, we cannot go back to Colhart. Wait, you can't? Why? Because I shot that foreman, remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because the spirits asked me to, and then they didn't give me anything, and they didn't even like me. Yeah, because you escalated the war between them and the people of Culhart. The spirits asked me to! The queen of the spirits asked me to! Well, she didn't promise you anything. She said she didn't remember promising me anything. Well, could we at least hide out with the spirits? No, because I shot the spirit queen! Wait, did you? I need to make a note of that. Hang on. Oh, wait. I did make a note of that. It, it says she gave you the Staff of Moonlight. I stole the Staff of Moonlight after I shot her, Tony, because she promised it to me. And then it broke, like three sessions later, when I used it as a crowbar, even though it was made of Colhart. Man, Elvis, your character has a much more complicated work history than I realized. Indeed. I would have liked to know all this before hiring you. Well, you didn't ask, de Blasio. You should have checked my references. Anyway, uh, 
I don't remember where I was with the description of the city. Everyone in Kohite sucks and is my enemy. I'm never going back there. Well, anyway, uh, you guys carry on until you arrive downtown and find yourselves looking at a large coliseum building with massive magical lanterns on top. At the front entrance, there's a huge buff-looking dude wearing a, a blacksmith's apron. When you approach, he says, Greetings, travelers. I am Smithsonian Fist, the pinball city blacksmith. And you are now standing in front of the Demo Dome, the premier location to test out all of our exciting products. He pulls out a platter with a bunch of assorted meats on it. Can I interest you in a free sample of Pinball City's famous exploding meat? Let your enemies kill themselves. Just pull out the toothpick and the meat explodes, taking your unfortunate victim's head with it. But that's not all. In an emergency, they also double as safe rations, just so long as you eat the toothpick. He inserts a whole cube of meat, toothpick and all, into his mouth and crunches it up. There's no explosion. Well, heck. I know there's a scam here, but I can't tell how it works. de Blasio also eats a meat sample with the toothpick still in it. It's delicious, but I have an appointment for today under de Blasio. I believe it should be for a premium service. He looks at you. Oh. Are these your guys? They are some guys, yes. That's right. We're guys. And we need guy weapons, like beef jerky, or some kind of land vehicle with giant tires. And it has to be able to kill a vampiric lawyer. A barbecue steak to drive through his heart. Well, let's get you guys in the arena so you well, can test out well, our products. Well, hang on. Why an arena? Well, well, these are combat products, so to test them out... They have to be using No, combat. I don't think we'll be buying anything then. What? <laughs> Why not? I can handle an arena. Are you saying I can't? Who are you, my dad? Look, I'm not your dad. But whatever's in that arena, it's gonna be worse than you think it is. You're not my boss, Elvis. You're not my mom or dad. I shove Elvis aside and march right in that arena. You know, I already have five swords. I don't really need more. Mine also have sentimental value, but I do at least want to see what they're offering. No, there's got to be, like, jewelry or hats or something, right? Yeah, okay, maybe. But we're going to have to fight something. I'm Mason Five Swords. That's what I do. Not for long. It's not going to be for long. You know what? Paul's right. You're not my dad either. Well, Elvis, I'll quit before we start. I don't mind. Well, we really should. I really want to. But I guess we also ought to go in there and help the other guys, you know? I mean, we don't really know them. You don't have to care for them. You're not their dad. Well, maybe we'll just play it safe, though, you know? They're gonna need the help. I go in. Mr. Fist, I surrender. You, you haven't even entered the arena yet. <sighs> okay, fine. I go in the arena. You guys step into a large coliseum. The gates close behind you. The crowds roar. Uh, we didn't get any weapons. A man in a golden suit flies down on a pair of rocket boots, carrying a large megaphone. Oh my god! Welcome, one and all, to another exciting product demonstration! Tony! You get down here! Oh, hey, Elvis! Where's everybody else? They're all dead, Tony! Uh, That's a shame. I thought they were all tougher than that. Elvis, who's this? This is Magical Tony. He's an alchemist engineer mage. And if he would recall, our old friend Tychus the Wolf died trying to operate a steam engine that Tony built! The instruction manual clearly stated that you shouldn't operate the engine without proper training. We kept an angry spirit in the instruction manual, and it kept telling us to put strawberry jelly on everything. What are you doing here, Tony? If you built the weapons in this arena, we're not touching them. Are you sure? I was gonna offer. My weapons have the best sales, you know. I wanna live, Tony. All right, no magic weapons for you. Magic Tony flies up over the crowd and announces... So, today I had several exciting new prototypes to show off, but that's not really why we're here. Our client, Mr. de Blasio, needs proving that we have the best bodyguards in the business. So, without further ado, I once again introduce to you, Tiny Dancer! The other gate slides up. A man who's about seven feet tall, wearing nothing but a loincloth, a glowing helmet, and carrying two shields emerges. He has the physique of a trim grizzly bear. I can neither dance, nor am I tiny. My nickname is Ironic. The crowd cheers. Wait a minute. Another bodyguard? De Blasio, we have a contract. You can't just do this. De Blasio shouts from the crowd. Good luck affording a lawyer. Tiny Dancer announces. I will defend De Blasio. I also have a law degree. 
I am trained in all forms of defense. Are we being replaced? Yeah, we just got hired. Well, Elvis vouched for you, and he hasn't exactly been performing well. David told me one of these pinball guards could mop the floor with my current bodyguard team for half the price. But this guy, Tiny Dancer, is a lawyer. I'm not working with a firm. Lawyers don't earn very good money early in their careers unless they make the right connections and get hired by a major company. Is that why you can't afford a shirt? My magic helmet and shields were very expensive, but with my physique, you don't need a shirt. Well, you need one to go shopping. They won't let you in a store without a shirt. Yeah, and de Blasio's rich. He probably does sit-down dining. And you gotta have at least real pants for that. Oh no! Mr. Magic Tony, I may have to withdraw from this battle and spend more time preparing. I've neglected a key aspect of my job requirements. De Blasio shouts. Oh, it's fine. I'll buy him a shirt if I have to. Tiny Dancer perks up. Really? I, I could never have dreamed of such charity. De Blasio is one of the most benevolent of contracted employers. I will fight now as though never before just to impress him. Tiny Dancer flexes his muscles and the wind kicks up around him. Electricity crackles in his aura. He's filled with the power of wanting to impress your boss. Oh, dang. I did not know you could power up from that. He points at Lowry. No, no, I surrender. He leaps forward and grabs you by the legs, then swings you overhead, slamming you down into the ground on his opposite side. You take 10 body and 30 stun. Well, I'm unconscious. It's Elvis's turn. Activate my invisibility ring. You twist the ring and vanish from sight. But the ring is now emitting a sound like a power transformer. I throw my knife at Tiny Dancer. You miss. The knife flies by Tiny Dancer and hits a turtle man in the crowd. It lands in his head. A turtle man? But they're an endangered species. He looks okay. He has a knife in his head. How do you mean he looks okay? Why did you throw it? Because I'm invisible, and he wouldn't know where I am if I stay my distance. The turtle man scratches around the knife. Paul, you're up. Bash this guy with the warhammer. You swing the hammer, but Tiny Dancer intercepts it with one of his mighty tower shields. Oh, well, then I probably broke the shield. No, it's a big shield. How big? Because if an attack hits a shield, you do the damage to the shield. And my warhammer is imbued with my father's biting, judgmental nature. So it only gets half armor. Oh, uh, well, it doesn't hit the shield. He just uses the shield to knock your warhammer away. Oh, okay. Mason. Gripping three swords awkwardly in each hand, cut this man down. He blocks you with the shield. But, geez, that's a lot of damage. Yeah, it's six attacks, but it's a lot of smaller hits instead of one really big one, so it's not very good against armor or, like, a direct shield Yeah, block. still. Uh, you know what? Uh, you ram the swords against the shield, and three of them break. They what? Yeah, uh, the, the shield is made of some of the most durable steel in the world. When your swords hit it, they shatter into pieces. Oh my god! Yeah, you're envious of this metalwork. I don't... I don't care about that! I just lost my identity! I stole those swords from my family. I'm Mason Five Swords. I learned to wield all five stolen swords and my own sword that I don't acknowledge. Now I'm Mason Two Swords. That's barely a title. Anyone can wield two swords. You still have three swords. I don't acknowledge that the last sword exists. Well, that sucks. But now it's Tiny Dancer's turn. And he says, Invisibility, huh? Normally I'd be disheartened by that, but empowered by my future boss's compassion, I know exactly what to do about it. He leaps high up into the air and grabs his ankles. Plunging prices! Saving shockwave! He lands knees first into the center of the arena, causing a massive shockwave of pure energy to ripple out in all directions. Everybody in the arena takes 12 body and 32 stun. Is anyone still awake? No. Dang it, guys, I said we shouldn't go in the arena. Paul, doesn't your shield redirect force? That's gotta be a direct attack. Man. Mason, I have been playing this campaign for months and my best weapon was a knife. Is that not a red flag? Man, I never know with you, Elvis. I thought you were doing a bit. My character's dead. Oh, really? I mean, unless there's a doctor with godlike medical powers within literally 30 seconds, I bleed to death. Then in that case, you're safe. Everybody wakes up in bed. When your eyes adjust, you realize you must be somewhere inside the Coliseum. You can hear the crowds cheering outside. Oh, man. I feel like I got hit by a sexy, muscular freight train. Buckle up, everybody. The pain is only just beginning. A woman pokes her head in the room and says, Oh, good. You're all awake. So, how will you be paying for your medical emergency?
How do we do what? How do we plan to pay for our medical costs? Did we sign a release form for all this? I, I don't think- We got pummeled by a naked man in your coliseum. You're the ones that should be liable. He was naked. He was naked. He was wearing a loincloth. That's even worse. That's scintillating. I have been emotionally scarred, and I'm going to suffer from traumatic feelings of body inadequacy from now on. How much are the bills? It rounds out to about a hundred gold. Oh, here we oh. go. Uh, that's not as bad as I thought. I mean, it's like a month's wages, but... I think you may have misheard me, Mr. Paul. I said one hundred gold. One gold coin is worth a hundred silver coins. Oh. <sighs> Tony, it said a bodyguard only gets paid like 150 silver a month. I'm sorry, ma'am. I don't know any professions that could afford that. Well, Mr. Paul, here at Pinball City, we like to work on a sort of Wookiee-like debt system. We save your life, and now you get to be our muscular friend who helps us fly our airships, and we all just pretend to understand what you're saying. What the heck is a Wookiee? None of us know how to fly airships. Seriously, Elvis, I keep saying you should learn to pilot an airship. Tony, it's a technical occupation and you have to go to school for it. And then you need to put in hundreds of hours of flight time. If nobody already has the skill, I don't see how you expect us to learn it. I know how to operate an arcane battle tank. Is that useful? Unfortunately, Mr. Lowry, we're a city in the sky and don't really need a land-based army. Actually, you know what? Forget it. I'll drive an airship. Put me behind the wheel. No. Lowry, nobody is going to be best friends with the lady who puts us into indentured servitude. I didn't say I was going to do a good job, Mason. I'm personally torn between passive aggression and outright defiance. You know what, I'm gonna go with defiance. You can't tell me what to do, lady. Actually, maybe we could steal the airship. I am still standing right here, Mr. Mason. Well then, go away! Jeez, we're trying to have a private conversation, lady! Okay, I'll just leave you all to figure out where you're gonna come up with the money. She exits the room. Okay, first of all, this is crap. I have a shield. My mom made this, by the way, and it's the best shield in the whole world. It's like a homemade cookie, forged with love, only it's made of steel and sometimes I hit people with it. It can heal bodily wounds and we did not need a hundred gold worth of healing. Really? They should have let you fix this up and we'd all be fine. Lowry, I thought you said your character was 30 seconds from dying. Yeah, but I have no way of knowing that in character. Pa, Mason Elvis, I am furious this woman has the audacity to ask so much money for a service with no justifiable purpose. And as retribution, I vote that we steal her airship. Also, maybe talk her into a multi-level marketing scheme. No. No. Lowry, do not try to talk these people into something devious and contracted. I have known Magic Tony for years, and nothing works on him, nor his associates. Elvis, I don't think you know who I am, on account of the fact that I lied on my resume about everything and didn't even use my full real name. I've scammed people in every country in the world, and I'm fluent in three languages. Look at this woman selling spiritually purified washcloths in no time. And if you don't believe me, that just goes to show you're smarter and more socially gifted than everyone else. You know, that's a really good quality in a salesperson. Have you ever thought about putting that to use? Because if so, I know a product that practically sells itself, and you would be an amazing asset to my sales teams at a higher level. I don't know, Larry. Last time we didn't listen to Elvis, we got physically annihilated by a beautiful man. Who we're gonna never live up to. Well, you fought him with swords made of graham crackers. Of course we lost. They were in my family for three generations. By the way, nice hammer work, Paul. The man was the size of a barn and you couldn't hit the thing he was blocking right, guys, you with. Listen, if we stay here, our debts are just gonna get worse and worse. And the only way out is gonna be to play nice with someone from Pinball City and be whatever a Wookiee is. I personally don't want to be a Wookiee. It sounds like a weird sex thing. But I have always wanted to go hiking in the Wolflands where the wolf people live. So here's my idea. We sneak out of here, see if we can catch up to de Blasio before he leaves. If he's already gone, we sneak on a boat to Elvarian and then hightail it south into the woods of the Wolflands. What's so great about the Wolflands? There's no laws, and they don't have extradition treaties with anyone, including Pinball City. Do they have indoor bathrooms? They have freedom to poop in the woods. Not having any other choice sounds kind of like a prison. Well, I think we should try to catch up to de Blasio at least. He signed us up for this. It should be his money on the line. Good, then let's get out of here. Okay, you guys check outside, and the halls are empty. It doesn't look like anyone is waiting to stop you. Can we get out through a window? You can! You climb out a window. Do any of you guys know how to find your airship? Okay, that's the other thing. You want someone to fly an airship, but no one ever takes navigation skills. 
I don't know why no one ever does. That's how you guys got stranded in the Arctic. We got stranded because Captain Peaches stole the airship. Yeah, but you guys way underpaid him. And we, then you couldn't we, do... You... We had bartering skills, and we negotiated a really affordable price that you thought at the time was ripping us off. And then between sessions, you check the wages section of the book, and you realize that Captain Peaches was earning less money than a monkey trainer. Okay, but if you guys had navigation, you wouldn't have needed Captain Peaches. Okay, forget it. Just point to some guy who looks like he works here. Hey, yo! You know where the dockyards are? Uh, the guy walks over to you, and he says, I sure do. I'm selling maps of the city for mere six gold apiece. Six gold? I could buy a breastplate for that much. Not here you can't, friend. Smithsonian Fist is the only smith in town, and he makes not only the finest breastplates in the world, but the most expensive. Any one of them will cost you a good hundred gold at minimum. Hey, if you want, I got price guides too. I'll sell you one of those for only... four gold. Uh, uh, hang on. You're exactly the kind of guy we're looking for. See, you know what things cost around here, and that puts you ahead above everyone else. I represent a brand called Lowry Opportunity Enterprises, and between you and me, it's a pyramid scheme. But I need someone at the mid-level to scam the rubes. You get you me? Want me to build pyramids? That's funny. You're funny. No. What I want is for you to accept a management opportunity and find some sales associates to work under you. Tony, while I'm talking, I pickpocket this guy's maps and price guides. Okay, you go for it, and you find it's all chained to his pocket. You also feel that this guy has a knife on him, so if he catches you, you might be in trouble. He says to you, Well, to be honest, I'm not really a very good salesman, so here's what I'll do. I'll sell you guys ten of these maps for four gold each, and then I'll let you guys run the street corner. You can keep the profits. Wow. You know, that's brilliant. Did I mention I'm a shaman? I'm having a premonition of great fortunes right now. Let's talk details. I'll negotiate for everybody, but in private, if you don't mind. Sure. Let's talk business. Wait, didn't you earlier tell us Don't worry. I got this. We're gonna get a great deal. I lead this guy down the alley. He follows you. Okay. How should we start? I grab his knife and I stab him to death with it. Ah! Oh, the irony! Uh, that weapon was for my self-defense! Is, is everything okay down there? Yeah, yeah, everything's fine. Uh, are, you, are you sure? I'm coming down there. Uh, actually, it's good that you volunteer. I need one of you guys to come down here, take off your pants, and let this guy inspect your glutes. What? No, I'm, I'm, Lowry, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, that sounds like stranger danger. You should not do that either. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you guys were professional negotiators. Tony, I steal this guy's wallet and take a price guide and a map. Well, he doesn't have any money, and you have to tear the maps off to get them off the chain. No. What? How? If he sold even one of these maps, he has at least more money than some people have ever seen at once. I think he would have more money than we have combined. That doesn't mean he sold any. Maybe everyone else knew they weren't worth that much. But then why was he even out here? You know, forget it. I take the maps. Don't they just unclip somehow? Actually, I don't care. Just free the maps. His knife has amazing craftsmanship, though, if anyone wants it. It's a murder weapon. I'm leaving it. Hey, guys, good news. My glutes were better than his, so he agreed to sell stuff for me, and he gave me a map. Oh, cool. Sales is weird. Tony, I checked the map for any magic runes or anything. You don't see any. Okay. I think it's safe. Of course it's safe. It's just a map. A very expensive map I had to show a stranger my naked rear end to get. So come on, let's go to the docks. You don't know what's dangerous. I once sat next to a seven-year-old girl on a train and her wig attacked me. You guys follow the map down to the docks. How long do you spend looking for de Blasio? Well, he's our only ride out of here, so... Yeah, we'd probably give it a good try. Then you guys search for 24 hours without rest or sleep and do not find him. What? <laughs> that seems excessive. Well, you keep walking up to people who look like de Blasio from behind, but then they turn around and it's a lady or an old man or, or, or a mop that looks like a guy in just the right light. And uh, it gives you false hope over and over until you realize, tired and defeated, it's the following day. Mason, can we take a break? I don't think we're going to find de Blasio. You're probably right. I feel like garbage. Oh, wait, I think that's him for real this time. Ah, oh, shoot, it's just my creepy Uncle Roger. Don't look, don't look. <laughs> well, hey, well, is that my nephew, Mason? Ah, uh, dang it. I don't think I've seen you since that time under the table at the Christmas party. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's been... That oh, was... look, your dad gave you three of his legendary swords. Uh, yeah. Actually, he gave me two of them. 
And this other sword is just for training. Are you sure? Because I heard it possessed the strongest power of all. Yeah, the power of austerity. That's weird. That's not what I heard. Well, would you like to join me for dinner of live eels? They're still slimy and wriggling. No, oh, thanks, Uncle Roger. We're busy and already like uh, 24 hours behind wait, schedule. Wait, do you live around here? How do you catch the eels? We're up in the sky. Do you have an airship? I do. It's a flying bathtub. Would anyone like to get in with me? The water's still warm. Uh, no thanks. We'll catch the uh, next uh, one. Uh, yeah, I'm no thanks, of Uncle Roger. Yeah, See you later. <laughs> Your loss. More bath bubbles for me. Toodaloo. He gets in his bathtub and flies away. Man, I hate Uncle Roger. How does he afford the local prices anyway? The man was naked. Oh, wait a minute. Elvis, you see a guy, and from behind, it looks just like de Blasio. Okay. No. At some point, we obviously became delirious. De Blasio is gone. We have to find our own way out of Pinball City. Then the guy turns around, and it's Captain Peaches. It... Yo! Oh, if it isn't Elvis. Long time no see, me boy. Run up and slug Peaches in his stupid face. You slam your fist into Peaches' chiseled jaw. He rubs his chin and says, It's good to see you, too. <laughs> that was a pretty good one. He punches you back, square in the teeth. You take a dive to the pavement. Oh, of course. Peaches steps over Elvis's prone body and shakes hands with the rest of the party. The name's Captain Peaches. Me and this deadbeat go way back. Last time I saw him was when he paid me to take him one way out to the Arctic Circle in search of some important artifact. But they refused to pay me the way back. So... I guess it couldn't have been that important. It's not exactly how we heard it. I'm Mason. This is Paul. Lowry. Oh, so you heard of me. Well, a lot's changed since then. I work here in Pinball City now. I know as much about airships as anyone, and I manage the docks. If you're visiting, between you and me, I'd be careful. There was a murder yesterday, and we're still looking for the perpetrator. Isn't this a city? People get murdered all the time. Hey, well... That's true of most cities, but this is Pinball City. We do have a local mugger, but uh, he's only a legend on account of the fact that we never actually found any of his victims. So the fact that we have a body on this one is out of the ordinary. It stands to reason and must have been a tourist. Uh, but not to worry. We're using necromancy to find the culprit. Before anyone leaves, we'll have the victim do a quick check on all the crew, and when the victim finds who killed him, he'll point him out. Oh. Well, that's fascinating. I've heard the undead are prone to fits of arcane horror and that they aren't really understood by anyone. So it's kind of incredible you have a system like that. The world's most premier wizards live in Pinball City. Understanding ghouls was only a matter of progress. I'm actually with Lowry on this one. I heard rumors that the undead can escalate in power without warning. There are legends of them tormenting whole villages over minor grievances. But your city just intentionally raises the dead. Yeah, Tony, there was a setting note in here about hauntings. I was a little curious about that because you guys mentioned an undead court case. Yeah, those are old setting notes. We're past all that. Those are old legends. The dead come back to finish their business, and we established a court system for that way earlier in the campaign. Okay. I was prepared to be stalked by a vengeful ghost, but if I'd known killing that guy was going to cause him to get right back up and report me to the police, I would not have stabbed him. Larry, you totally still would have. Okay, but I would have taken steps to stop him from telling on me. So do they still have... Uh, Captain Peaches, does he still have supernatural powers? Like, can he freeze a man in place by looking into his eyes? Indeed he can. The perpetrator won't be able to run. Okay, and can he... Look, I don't know how to ask this in character, because it said people don't understand the undead, which apparently is now out the window. But the note said the undead are connected to the magical ether, so they can cast spells as powerful as their grudge or purpose would allow. Or even create their own magic. So basically, Lowry killed this guy, but it only turned him into an ageless warlock who can take control of a place he feels connected to, and he's still 100% in control of his own faculties. Well, well he... Uh, you know what? I'm going to write that down. I had not thought of that. Right? So, like, we just did this guy a huge favor. I saw it says people try to bind themselves to spirits or demons to achieve exactly those powers. So if they can make stable undead... Well, he can't have kids or anything, so... It's not like most people would actually go through with that. Well, they just make their own magic. If they're mentally stable, they have all the time to figure out how to have kids through magic. Oh my god, Paul. Tony, can I wake up now or do I have brain damage? I guess you're awake now. Captain Peaches, how much do they charge to raise the dead? Well, uh, 
They charge about 10,000 gold. But they just casually do this for murder victims. Aye, but this be a special case. And I don't know what it actually costs the necromancer, but they probably charge a lower fee to the guard. Okay, but if you found me in an alleyway with a knife in my back, you'd bring me back as a powerful demigod to cooperate with the investigation? I mean, I can't guarantee they would. They, They probably wouldn't. If they figure out it's suicide, they wouldn't investigate. Paul, do not kill yourself. It won't work. They'll take one look at your body and just smell the desperation. Well, I don't know now. I'm actually thinking about how I might do a separate experience system for undead powers. See, my mom wouldn't approve, but my dad would be upset if I passed up an opportunity. Can I just... Hang on, everybody. Paul, Tony is like an evil genie. Do not take that power. It will ruin your character. Okay, fine. Well, Mr. Peaches, not that this hasn't been interesting. Captain Peaches. Yeah. I don't suppose we could rent an airship to get out of here, could we? Rent an airship? Do you have any idea how expensive they are? Wait, well, wait, you're traveling with Elvis, so of course you don't know how much one is. Airship's free to own nor to Captain Elvis. I know how much they're worth. You stole the one I bought. Well, we're probably even now, considering the amount you'd owe me after interest by this point. You stole the airship the minute you realized you'd negotiated your pay too low. You can't charge interest on a debt that you collected on illegally the second you decided you were owed a debt. In fact, you are a criminal. I'm I'm gonna... I can't beat you in a fist fight, but I can sure as heck tell your boss about your airship theft. Who is your manager? Magic Tony descends from the sky on his rocket boots. Go away, Magic Tony. I am busy yelling at Peaches here. Did you know that Peaches worked here? Of course I do. I hired him. You... You hired him? No. No. Okay. First of all, Magic Tony, you are not anyone's employer. The last time we were together, I made you sleep in the latrine. Remember? That was your bunk. I do remember that. By the time we got to the North Pole, it was the warmest place on the ship. Do not thank me. Well, I wasn't, really. I am your boss. Your boss. We have had that kind of relationship in the past. And I don't know how you could forget, but Captain Peaches is why. Actually, hang on, the last time I saw you, you were wandering off into a blizzard in the North Pole. Tony, I don't think I've seen you since then. Uh, Wait, wait, are... Are you just now realizing that that's the last time you saw me? Well, because, it's, because, it's happened before. Because, remember, remember remember when we were in the woods being chased by angry spirits and we didn't have any food, we were lost because no one ever knows how to navigate. And then you ran off in a different direction from us. And I remember Chapman being worried about you. But the next morning, what happened? I came back, and you guys threw acorns at me, and then I collected the acorns, I boiled them, I roasted them, and I ate them. Okay, first, Barry the White threw those acorns at you, no one else threw acorns. Second, you came back with a basket full of fresh muffins, and you wouldn't tell us where you found them. You just kept saying that you got them in the forest. Because that's where I found them! In the forest! The same place where I found the acorns you guys threw at me! The point is... When you got lost at the North Pole, I assumed you'd probably be fine. Again. Out there eating your wild forest muffins or whatever. Why are you in charge of peaches? Well, funny thing, and you're going to laugh, but I'm actually in charge of all of Pinball City. Or, okay, maybe you won't laugh. Maybe you'll just sit there in stunned silence. Are you, like, the mayor? No. Not exactly. No. No, no. I I don't understand government structure, per se, so... That's because you you don't have any money. We never let you have the money after the time you spent our whole bank account on feathered hats. I guess you could say I'm... Whatever it is when you have 100% complete power, but you're not an evil person like a king or a prime minister. I don't know if there's a word for it. Dictator. No, 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 no. I do not dictate. I'm, I'm more of a suggester. Like... A really good suggester. The supreme benevolent suggestion maker of Pinball City. What happens if someone disagrees with one of your suggestions? Well, uh, my suggestions are really good, so if you don't accept them, you're obviously not good yourself. And in that case, we suggest you leave Pinball City. Hey, speaking of that, we're actually trying to get a ferry out of here. Where do we go and how much does one cost? Oh, there's no ferries to or from Pinball City. If you can't afford your own ride, you really can't afford to be here. So, it kind of works itself out. 
Then how does one leave Pinball City if you suggest that they go and they don't have an airship? Well, you could always walk off the edge. Okay, I think I'm piecing this all together. If it helps, I'll offer another piece. If you break the law, we'll impound your airship. Well, I'm still struggling to piece this all together. But I'm not. And I just want to say, Mr. Magic, it sounds like you and Elvis have a lot of history. And I'm just a hired sword. I barely know the guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah not even too. been don't around even him for him. a month. Oh, don't side with Tony. He sleeps in a latrine. Tony, how much is it going to cost to buy an airship around here? I mean, it sounds like you're confiscating them and everything. You guys are in luck, because right now I am working on a cutting-edge prototype airship. The whole works. And for Elvis, because we go way back and I know he's going to do interesting things with it, I could let it go for two million gold. You mean two million silver? Airships are expensive, and Magic Tony is offering to sell you a -a one-of-a-kind, special custom one. Here. I drew a picture of it if you want to see what it looks like. Tony, a barge would cost like 200,000 silver. A gold is 100 silver, so 2 million gold is is like... Oh, really? Hang on. Let me see if I can find where... uh, Hold Uh, on. Hey, Uh, could we actually not be going through notes at the uh, table? Okay, well, I don't know where I have them listed, but I guess that's a pretty big gap in prices. Well, I don't like to lose the action, so let's just keep going. Okay, 2 million gold it is. See the guns on this schematic? They look like ordinary cannons, but they're actually a brand new weapon that I think I'm going to call Space Lasers. (laughs) It's like buying a Ferrari to go to the grocery store. Or like paying the entire R&D budget for a fighter jet program because no one's invented a taxi service. Well, let me check the congressional budget of Mason. Ah, yes. Seems I'm running a deficit of 100 gold. At this rate, we'll be out of here in approximately infinity years. All right, I know two million gold is a lot of money, but I've got a job for you guys that'll pay that bill faster than you'd imagine. All you have to do is sign a contract agreeing to pay the price for the ship, and it's yours. And then I'll cut you guys in on a percent of the profits of the job that I have for you. Okay, yeah, Tony, that's great. You mind if I talk to the guys? Sure thing, Elvis. I know you like to figure out which latrine everyone is sleeping in before you go somewhere. Great. Uh, Guys, listen, we cannot take up Tony on this deal. Yeah, I was going to say, you never accept a cut of the profits. A little accounting and it's all gone. If he's not offering a percent of the gross, we're being taken for a ride. Well, what are we supposed to do? I'm not exactly cut out for service work. The last time I worked at a bar, I kept stealing drinks. I'm with Mason. My dad would say something approving, but he'd say it in a way that implied he wasn't happy. It is the worst thing. I won't even be able to say anything because he's going to make it sound nice. We can't even take a cut of the gross. Suppose that Tony sends us on a job that doesn't turn a profit. Who do you think he's obligated to pay? You guys? And who doesn't have leverage to ask for their pay if they get stiffed? Well, the airship would be collateral. Paul, Magic Tony is the supreme benevolent suggester, or whatever, of Pinball City. I'm pretty sure that means that he'll be the presiding judge in any court case against him. And before I met you guys, I already lost a lawsuit. I am not a good lawyer. My lawyer wasn't a good lawyer either. All around, a lot of people let each other down, and I'm not going down that road again. Okay, my plan is to sleep in a back alley, beg for petty cash, and hope that by pure luck I manage to snag a boss who doesn't want to sign me up for 20 lifetimes of debt. Did you see how sexy and naked the hired guards are here? I bet we can't even afford the oil for our pecs. People are coming to the city to ditch guys like us, Mason. This is where we go to die. My dad knew I'd never amount to anything. Mom told him that he was wrong, and that's why they split up. Paul, you are a desperate armed man with nothing to lose, living in a city where the cost of living is your life, and the price of murder is exactly the same. If you lived in the hills, they'd call you a bandit. And if it comes to it, so help me, they'll call us something like that on posters all over this city. Do you understand? Oh, my mom would never approve of that. She doesn't have to know. My mom would never approve, Elvis. She doesn't have to know. Paul, she's not here. She'll never find out. Personally, I'm down for, like, a little banditry. I mean, stealing is wrong unless the situation is unfair. And then all this seems pretty unfair to me. Well, I'd like to point out that killing people just to take their belongings is as morally reprehensible as it gets. And I've never really considered doing something like this. But when your back's against the wall, your back's against the wall. Paul, the next time you see your father, you want to tell him that when the city shoved you, you didn't shove back? No. And you want to tell your mom you weren't ready to be out in the big world, and your dad was right all along? 
I don't want to do that, Lowry. All right, well, we'll mark down murder as a last resort. For now, Tony, we've come to a decision. As a group, we'd like you to take your offer and shove it just as far up your rear end as physically possible. In fact, if you could shove it so far up there that it comes out your throat and then you choke on it, that would be all right. Well, okay. This is the same thing that you said about those muffins that I found in the forest. Actually, it would be even better if you could shove it so hard it falls out of your mouth and then you just pick it up and then shove it back up there a second time. That would be just hard enough. Just that hard would make me happy. I suppose I'll try, but are you sure? This is a really cutting-edge airship, and you know I'm probably going to find another buyer. Tony, you are selling it for two million gold. You could buy a fleet of 400 War Griffin class ships with that money. You aren't going to sell that ship to a person. You're going to sell it to a nation. A nation that only wants a single warship. And I bet the maintenance costs don't make this any better. Actually, yeah. Can you imagine trying to land that ship? Like, literally anywhere? The cost of security alone would be astronomical. Well, that's the amazing thing! He has an onboard demon fused directly to the ship's engine, preventing anyone from boarding without your permission. Tony, that's illegal! No, it isn't. Binding demons is not illegal. Yes, it is. It gives them a permanent physical place to live. It's extremely illegal. There were treaties about what, it. What, Never mind. What else are you supposed to do with them? Banish them! Yeah, by binding them to a physical location. No, that's binding. Spirits still do things if they're bound. Banishing is sending them back to the magical ether. That doesn't matter. Have you shoved that thing far enough up your butt? I don't hear you choking. I guess I'll try. For old time's sake. If you guys change your mind, I'll be here trying to shove an entire multi-million gold airship into my butt. Thank you. Guys, come on, let's go. Okay, where are you guys going? I have no idea, but I go there with confidence and purpose. We need shelter, rest, and food. At these prices, generally not gonna happen. How fast can you guys convince an old woman that she should marry you? My record is three days. We don't have time to scam old women, Lowry. Besides, all the women around here are crazy. Trust me. You didn't even know where the docks were. How do you know who's crazy? Everyone in the whole world is crazy. Everything around here costs gold. Maybe people are tossing silver coins in the fountains? I guess we can check. Let's go to the bakery and get some bread. We can eat at the fountains on the way. Okay, you guys find a fountain outside a bakery. You look in, and uh, yeah, there's a bunch of silver coins in there. They're using luxury stone for their storm drains and throwing an ordinary man's salary in the water. No sense in letting it go to waste out there. I start scooping up coins. Some of them in the fountain are pretty far in, so uh, you're going to have to roll up your pants and wade in there. Not me. I have a retractable claw up my sleeve. I use it to reach all the coins. What do you mean, like a retractable claw? Like it has an accordion mechanism that lets it stretch out about a half meter and grab things. Normally I use it for sleight of hand, but in this case I'm just going to grab coins with it. Well, in that case, give me a roll. For what? To grab the coins. Okay. Ooh, crit fail. Well, you shoot your claw out into the water, but when it hits the surface, it causes the claw accordion to shear and it breaks. Now you have to wait out in the water if you want to get the pieces back. I was rolling to see if my claw would break. No, just to use it to pick up the wet coins, but, uh, you know, crit fail. Oh my god. Okay, I guess I roll up my pants and walk out in the water to get my broken extendo claw. Pick up all the coins while you're out there. May as well save the Elvis, trip. I don't need... You know what? It's what I was already gonna do, but because you're micromanaging me, now I'm gonna take a fee. You can't take a fee. We have to pool the money to afford literally anything. Well, then I'm taking an extra 15% of whatever we buy. How are you going to do that on housing? I'm going to stretch my legs out on the bed. By exactly 15%? Do you have a ruler? Can we even afford a ruler in this place? We could measure cubits. Yeah, we'll do cubits. What the heck is a cubit? It's the length of your forearm. Whose forearm? Whoever does the measuring. It's an ancient measuring system. It's not standardized. Exactly. We're going to measure out the bed using Paul's forearm, and I get an extra 15% of whatever that number is. Or how about you get nothing, and I give you a wet willy? Do you want to come out here and collect coins yourself? I'll come out there and give you a wet willy. I'm not afraid to get my ankles wet. Well, then come out here. Spaz. All right, you asked for it. I go out in the fountain. Bring it. Now your pants are all wet. Come here. No, get off of Don't me. Don't fight it. Get off. I'll twist your nipples too. A small crowd starts to gather while you guys are fighting. A small kid asks, Mommy, what are those men doing? She covers his eyes and hurries him along. Don't look. Wait, a crowd? There's a crowd? Hey, all of you, explain yourselves. Someone yells, You're the one in the fountain. Another guy says, Dunk his head. No, I mean, how did a crowd accumulate of people rich enough to be here? 
Each of you would have to be some kind of nobility. Wait a minute, yeah. Hang on. Has a tenth of the Fortune 500 list gathered around this fountain? We're tourists. With private airships? We came on a cruise ship. Well, don't slip and fall here. They charge three lifetimes for a band-aid. There's a doctor's office on the cruise ship. Really? How much does it cost to get on the cruise ship? You have to book the tickets in advance. You guys stop being interesting. The crowd starts to thin out. Wait, where are you going? If you let me on the cruise, I'll, I'll put bugs in Lowry's hair. It'll be funny. Get off of me. Seriously, though, I don't understand this town's economy. Did you guys get any money? They found about 75 silver. That is half a month's wages tossed in that fountain. Yeah, but around here, it probably doesn't even afford us food. Let's go see how much it'll cost us to buy a loaf of bread. Tony, I go in the baker's shop. The bell rings as you let yourself in. A man in a chef's hat looks up. Ha <laughs> ha! Welcome to Pinball Bakery! I am Chef Breadsticks, famous inventor of breadsticks, and the world's greatest bread chef. How can I help you today? Yeah, I was hoping to get your most affordable bread. How much does one affordable bread cost? Well, uh, I guess you can have a single bread roll for one gold. Uh, of course. Okay, you know what? Why does everything cost at least a gold? The leather armor I'm wearing could save my life, and it costs less than the bread rolls here. What manner of insane runaway inflation is causing this place to operate? <laughs> what nonsense! Have you any idea what my delicious rolls would sell for back in Elvarion? A single gold is doing you a kindness. In fact, I raised the price to two gold. Thanks, Paul. I don't thank me yet. You know what? Why don't you raise the price to 300 gold? Huh? For all the difference it makes, if you're such a good chef, why'd you leave Elvarion to be on an island that sells goods only to barons and landowners? The time and money just to fly out here means you must be making less cash in a day than a second-rate baker back in Elvarion. Huh. Huh. You have no idea what you're questioning. Why, my bread is so light and fluffy, sometimes it just floats away. When he says that, one of the rolls he's trying to sell you floats off the plate. It rises up until it sticks to the ceiling. Oh, oh, hang on. Excuse me. He gets a ladder, unfolds it, climbs up, grabs the roll, and puts it back on the plate. It's okay. The ceiling is very clean. I clean it every day. Look, I don't care if the bread can recite poetry. The ingredients would cost you less in a place where you didn't have to fly it out on an airship. I, I don't, and if you I don't, sold... I don't import anything. The ingredients are all made here in Pinball City by the finest artisans. You think I can make flying bread without the appropriate level of skill going into all the ingredients? Why? Because everyone here is not just a professional, but an artist. Not that you would know anything about that. I guarantee that whatever they're using to grow crops in Pinball City would cost a thousand times less anywhere else. Which would mean that you'd pay a lot less to have them, which means you'd have actually decent margins in your sales. You could sell ten of those rolls for ten silver each, and you'd make more money that way than selling a single roll for one gold. And that's not even factoring in the cost of rent, which I bet must be extravagant around here. As you're berating this man, a, a woman walks in wearing a set of luxurious furs. Good morning, Baker. I'd like to order a dozen bread rolls. Of course, madame. For you, a mere twenty gold. My, my. We are feeling generous today. She hands him twenty coins and leaves with a sack of bread. You are saying? Okay. You're right. Obviously, you make enough money to hire an entire army by selling a few bread rolls, and I'm the stupid one. Tony, I pull out my warhammer. But I don't see an army here as the thing. So how about you hand over that and everything in the register? Are you sure you want to do this? You're holding enough there in your hand for a man to live on for two years. I bet the register gets me by another ten. There's risks and rewards, and this is probably the most no-brainer choice I've ever seen. I'm just gonna walk slowly out of the bakery. No-brainer is right! Fly my Halloween cookies! The chef pulls aside a sheet sitting on top of a basket of cookies with bat wings printed on them. They rise up, then fly directly to you, Paul, swarming all over you at once. What? They're biting you everywhere, crumbs going down your shirt. <laughs> I stumble out of the bakery. Oh my god, get them off of me. You fall on the ground, but just as you think it's all over, gravity overcomes the cookies, and they begin to float away. They still try desperately to get back at you, but they're not strong enough. Do not try that ever again, or I will get the ghost cookies next time. Oh my god, Paul. I'm so disappointed in you. I'm sorry, Elvis. I didn't know he had devil cookies! They were bats! Not that, I meant the robbery. I mean, he had so much money. Each of those cookies must have cost about a gold each, and they flew away! They have so much money! No, no! 
I mean, why would you give him a chance to retaliate? Are you stupid? What? What do you think a Warhammer is for? Does it look like a book? Do you think everyone's gonna look at it and read a message from it? I mean, yeah. It's, it's it a is big... a killing implement! You kill people with it! If you're gonna mug a guy, you smash his head before he even knows what's going on, okay? Every time you brandish a weapon, it's a game of murder chicken! You don't win every time unless you kill the other guy first every time! Y yeah, but... Jeez, if uh, I had a weapon, I would have killed that chef while you were talking to him! Hey, uh, not to get in the middle, but if casual murder is on the table, I just want to say, first of all, reprehensible. Second, totally understandable. We live in a harsh world. Oh, you have no idea. Also, just putting this out there, I actually was the one who killed that guy with the maps. Uh, so I was doing this before it was cool. Two, uh, I, that means I'm not a cop. Three, if we try to leave this city according to the rules, they're going to find me because they raised the dead. Right. Okay. You should not have told me that. First rule of murder. Guys. Everybody. Deny everything. If anyone asks if you get arrested or anything, lie. Just lie. Make up any lie in the world. If a single true word passes your lips, you have screwed up. Elvis, I think I might be in love with you. Uh, I mean, I don't know if I'm cool with this. I know I, know I said banditry was on the table, but I meant... I justified. am a retired assassin. Oh. Well, that would explain some of your perspective. Honestly, if I knew you guys were okay with jumping straight to killing for money, I wouldn't have bothered with the fountain. I actually don't know that I'm okay with going straight for killing. Yeah, well, it's a three to one vote. Yeah, get on board or we're gonna kill you. Oh, uh, okay. Mason, look at me. Not a single person in this world upholds their promises. We cannot form a trusting bond with anyone. Except, weirdly, your three closest friends, and it's only just three. Okay, the extra guy, who's usually Tony, not trustworthy. I don't know why, but I can only ever trust a maximum of three people at a time. Everyone else always tries to rip me off, steal from me, or use me for some stupid political purpose that's worse for me than doing nothing at all. All of my greatest achievements have come from cheating and killing. Oh man, are you writing my personal biography or what? Okay, so obviously, we can't rob the baker because he's already wise to us. Paul... I am sorry, I did not know. But I bet we could get someone else. And if we mutilate the corpse bad enough, it won't matter if they can raise No, them. okay. No, 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 no. I vote we kill Mason. Look, if, shut up, Lowry. No, I bet he has tons of money. Let's kill him. We can't just kill people because it's easy. We have options. They said we could be Wookiees. I don't want to sell my body. It's demeaning. Or all that bread the chef doesn't sell has to go stale eventually. I bet the stuff they throw away is better than the stuff that we pay for at home. I bet we could probably live almost like kings by being homeless in Pinball City. I don't know. It's like stealing. Only, you know, technically legal. Yeah, see? And less risky. I bet there's tons of really valuable garbage around here. Dumpster diving also sounds demeaning. Murder demeans your soul, Larry. You know what else is demeaning? Stealing your family's ancestral weapons and then losing half of them. Well, you know what? If I wind up killing anyone, it's going to be you. You don't have the guts. I didn't know I was the only one here who wasn't a sociopath. I'm not a sociopath. Yeah, and I've never been formally diagnosed. It's just that when life gets you down, sometimes you gotta look it in the eye and then threaten it with a hammer. Again, just to be clear, you look life in the eye and then you kill it, Paul. Otherwise, you give it a chance to stab you, or in this case, attack you and humiliate you in the street with flying cookies. I am sure we can find a balance. No, Paul. There is no balance in the world. Anyway, let's just check the trash. I'm sure it's going to be great. You guys are going to say I had a great idea. I'm going to say, don't touch me, Mason. You've been digging through the trash. Magical golden trash from the magical city of gold. My hands will be sticky with golden marmalade from a jar that you could scrape just one more sandwich's worth from. I would... Almost rather be a Wookiee. I bet they get paid good money around here. Yeah, but for real, though. And of course, I bet most professional Wookiees around here also know six languages and have a law degree. Everyone, just shut up and help me root through the trash. You guys look around for a trash can, but you don't see any sitting out in front. Instead, you work your way around an alley. It's dark and in the shade, away from the eyes of everybody else. And there behind the bakery, you see a dumpster. But as you approach, you hear something scratching around inside. There's a loud thump, and the whole dumpster slides about an inch. Mason, 
killing a man is gonna be so much easier than whatever happens next. Okay, before we rush to any assumptions, I'd like to remind everyone that this is a bakery dumpster. So whatever's in that dumpster may very well just be bread that floats. Mason, even if it is just bread, the bread that guy makes is demonstrably not harmless. If deadly cookies are the stuff he keeps, what do you think he throws away? I don't know, Paul. People throw my whole life savings in a fountain around here. Whatever's in that dumpster has to be worth more than a month's wages. The dumpster lurches again, as though something heavy hit the side. It doesn't have to be. Why, Elvis? The streets are paved with money. I bet if we took this city to a scrap dealer, we'd live like kings. Why does something horrible have to be in the dumpster? I'm just saying. One time I shot a shopkeeper because his prices on ammunition were too high. I got to raid the store and guess what? There was only eight rounds of ammo in the whole place. What does that have to do with a dumpster full of the world's greatest bread? I'm just saying, if I still had a gun, I'd shoot that dumpster. The dumpster lurches again. You hear something growling inside. All right, look, I get that everybody just wants me to fail. No, oh. that's not what we're saying. Well, Mason, know. two swords. I bet his plans suck. He only has two swords. Technically, you have Shut three. up. There's nothing dangerous in here. I open the dumpster. It's quiet. Paul, get your hammer ready. Okay. Well. I guess it's not flying bread. A giant man-sized it... winged raccoon leaps out of the dumpster and grabs Mason by the shoulders. Ah! Oh my god! It's emaciated! It's diseased! It's missing one eye and its teeth snarl in all directions. What do we do? Pop what do we do? Hammer. If it's black attack, if it's if it's brown, Somebody lie down. help me! As your friends panic, it takes to the sky, carrying Mason with it. Oh no! Tony, I've also got extendo boots. I use them to spring up and grab a hold of Mason. So, Laura, you're, like, on stilts now? Yeah, accordion stilts. Okay, uh, you grab hold, and the raccoon flaps harder. It starts to lift you both into the air, and your stilts leave the ground, too. Ah, uh, heck. Lowry, what did you even think would happen? How was I supposed to know it had demon strength, Mason? I grab Lowry from the stilts. Paul grabs Lowry by the stilts, uh, but, but the raccoon flaps even harder now, uh, straining against the weight of all three. Paul comes inches off the ground. Oh, God. It's eaten the most nutritious food in the world, and now look at what man has created. In the pursuit of perfect bread, we didn't stop to think about perfect scavenger animals. It's a glorified street pigeon. You guys don't have to wax so poetic about it. It's not a pigeon, Lowry. Its horrible talons are digging into my flesh. It tries to fly away, but it can only muster the power to drag Paul's toes along the ground. It's pulling you guys out of the alley. Behind you, old bread starts to float from the dumpster. Oh gosh, our dinner! I go to grab the bread. Yeah, don't mind us, Elvis. We have this perfectly under control. Don't listen to Lowry. Elvis, that bread is worth more than our lives. Yeah, the raptor coon will get tired. Just grab the bread. You look the bread over and shake off some bugs. Inside the dumpster, there appears to be a bunch of insects that look like jewel beetles, except they've got actual jewels on their backs. You're not sure if the jewels have any value or if they only look like stones, but you do see that the bread that's been chewed on the most by the beetles is not floating. When the beetles fly away, they trail an ethereal blue afterglow. Really? Try and catch one. They're not very fast. You grab one. Paul, Elvis, and Lowry, you guys get dragged out into the streets proper. A child points at you, but his mom covers his eyes and hurries him down the road. Yeah, I didn't want to see your kid either, lady. I guess they can't all be cute. There's a camera flash. Someone in the crowd has taken a picture. Oh, God. Oh, no, no one should see my face. Yeah, great. Don't help us or anything. Just stand around and rubberneck. Someone in the crowd goes, She's fine. And then everyone kind of goes on their way. People part ways around you so you can move down the street unimpaired. Fire would be too good for this city. Excuse me, pardon me. Oh, hold open my bag and try to make it look like a show. Hello there, madam, spare a few coins. Give me an acting role. Ah, shoot, does anyone know how to sing? I'll assist. I've got the skill. Say, Paul, did I ever tell you about the time I shot an elephant in my pajamas? How it got in my pajamas, I'll never know. Oh, that is not a good role. That's a great one, Larry. Hey, lady, give me your money! People avoid you even harder. Come on, Paul, you're killing my act. Where is this thing even taking us? Elvis, you're still back at the dumpster examining this beetle you caught. Apparently I'm enthralled with it. Okay, hold it in one hand, then cast a spell to light up the piece of bread I'm holding. You utter the words and will the spell. The beetle crumbles to dust and the bread glows like daylight. Wait, the beetle dies? Okay, weird, but okay. Hey, guys! Oh, uh, shoot. Uh, scoop up these beetles into a pouch. As many as I can get. Hey, guys! 
Guys! Go catch up with everybody. All right, uh, well, most of the buildings around here are only a story or so tall, so it's really easy to find the other guys. Wait, so it's all suburban sprawl? It's a floating city with extremely limited land real estate, but it's not built vertically at all? It's a city full of wealthy artisans, and everyone lives in their place of business. Anyway, you realize where the raptor coon is taking you. Off in the distance, there's a house with a bunch of found garbage art. And on the roof, there's another dumpster. There's a bunch of baby raptor coons eagerly bouncing up and down in anticipation for their next meal. Okay. Guys, I think I'm going to stab the animal. The raptor coon looks at you. Oh, don't even give me that. You knew this was coming. Mason, does that thing understand you? I mean, it's going to understand a sharp thing in its guts. I get out my sword. You pull out the sword, and it drops you. Lowry, give me a dex roll with complimentary strength to try and catch yourself. Well, I've got the dex, at least. Yeah, but it looks like not the strength. You catch yourself and manage to line Mason up over your stilts, but then you come down a lot less gradually than you'd like, landing on top of Paul. Oh, God! Ah! You guys, that thing recognized the threat of a sword when you pulled one on it. You know what that means? That it's intelligence? Would you please get off of me? No, it means that someone has stabbed that raptor coon many, many times, and it knows better. Guys! Guys! Ah, good, you got away. Yeah, we made it. Did you get the bread? I got something even better. Check it out. I pull out the jewel bug. Elvis shows you guys a pretty blue-green beetle with little gemstones all over its back. It has an unearthly glow about it. Are those real gemstones? None of it's real. It's a spirit bug. What? Living in the trash? Yeah! I mean, yeah. Is that normal? The spirits normally live in the trash? Man, are you telling me that that bread guy's bread is so good that his dumpster is a fey wonderland? Well, I don't know why they're in there exactly, but check it out. Tony, I create a little rubber ball in my open palm. There's a brief flash of blue light, and a rubber ball materializes in Elvis's hand. The beetle he was holding turns into dust and disintegrates away. Okay, now watch this. I grab another beetle, then turn the ball into a butterfly. The ball becomes a butterfly. It flaps its wings and flies away. The beetle once again disintegrates. Neat. So the beetles do that? No. Well, kinda. I mean, do you know anything about magic, Paul? I know we're trapped in a floating city full of bakery horrors we can't afford to eat, held aloft by magic and pure malice. Okay, well, a few people are touched by the gods before they're born, and if you're very lucky, you can learn magic. But to cast a spell, you need something attuned to the spiritual world. It serves as a conduit to the ether. Most of the time, that kind of thing would be a spirit bound to some kind of mundane object. And it's another reason why binding demons is illegal, because to use such an object requires touching it with your god-blessed soul. So you're, like, sucking the magic out of those beetles? Well, that's the weird thing. It wouldn't normally kill the spirit. Think of them as being conductors, like a little bit of copper wire. A really powerful conductor could let you cast some pretty incredible spells if you knew how, at least until you use it as a crowbar and it breaks forever. I don't know why these beetles are turning to dust, but they're Pinball City residents, so I'm okay with them dying. Could they get like that from eating spiritually infused bread? I mean, if the baker were summoning things into his bread, could that make the trash beetles magical? You know, I've never tried eating a spirit. Are you thinking about it? Well, I'm already magically gifted. I, I don't think it would make any difference. Could I eat the beetles? Paul, don't eat the beetles. They probably have magic parasites. There's got to be a whole black market for eating spiritual creatures. Normally they fade back into the ether if they die. But you could just eat these guys like peanuts. Actually, I don't think you could eat spirit bread without killing it. I don't know why these bugs are like this or why they're here, but all that aside... You guys could probably cast magic, anyway. Okay, I know that's not true. I've been a con all my life, and I recognize this. No, we're, listen, we're all naturally attracted to each other. All my friends have magic talent, including Tony, although he never really used it much. It's a 1 in 10,000 chance that you've been gifted, but everyone that I've personally bonded with has had the gift. I like you guys, so I figure you're probably gifted. So, you're saying I'm actually special? My mom did always used to say. You're saying I could be Mason Magic Swords? Oh, it alliterates. Maybe this is destiny. Maybe every sword I touch can be magic. Wait, Mason's swords already are magic. This is a con. Wait a minute. Yeah, Elvis, they are. Uh, listen, your swords are not exactly the same thing. It's kind of technical. I've got a book on the surface of ether and the sphere of Atman. It's kind of about the differences between personal and external magic. It's a little wordy, but you could read it in your spare time if you want. How much is that book worth? I will never find another copy. We are not selling my books on magic theory. As far as you know. Okay, teach me magic swords. How do I do magic swords? Well, let's start off with something small. I pick up a rock and I hand it to Mason. Then I put a beetle in his other hand. Okay, 
concentrate on pulling yourself through the beetle. Myself? Yeah. When you do magic, you do it through yourself. That beetle is like a bridge, or, or like I said, a piece of copper wire. Every spell, even if you're doing the same thing, is actually kind of unique. You have to find it in yourself, in whatever shape that power's in, and then you pull it through the beetle and bring it outside. Okay. Am I going to throw up? No. Well, maybe. My friend Tychus used to, but he did it on purpose. Uh, okay, try to find yourself maybe like a happy light or a warm light, like the sun, and fill that rock with that feeling in yourself. Will I run out of me if I do this too much? Am I putting my soul in the rock? Yeah, but it grows back, don't worry. Ethereal energy always goes back to the ether. It can't be gone for good. Okay, I concentrate on the rock. What kind of feeling do you look for? Also, give me an ego roll. I think about the warm feeling I had after I stole my family's weapons, and then when I was finally able to wield them all simultaneously. It was the feeling of destiny. That's what this is now. Okay. You concentrate on the rock. You feel the warmth somewhere inside you through a little keyhole in your palm. You take that feeling and pull it out of the keyhole, and you weave it into the rock. The rock starts to light up. Oh my god, I'm doing it! But the feeling is like a fire. It gets hotter and hotter, and soon it's flowing out of the keyhole beyond your control. No longer a stream, it becomes like a blowtorch. At once, the rock burns your hand and then explodes. You take two body damage to your hand. Ah! Oh, my hand! Ah, oh, God! I don't want to do magic anymore. Oh. That was a really good first try, Mason. You're actually really gifted. I've never seen anyone blow something up on their first try. That means you've got a lot of potential. Thanks. Ugh. So they don't always explode then, huh? Yeah. If anyone else wants to try, an explosion is out of the ordinary. And actually pretty above average. Good job, Mason. Well, now if I don't blow my hand up, I'll just feel inadequate. That's all right. You know, you naturally channel your magic into your own body all the time. You probably just chalk it up to luck or training. But if you got the magic in you, it makes you just a little better at everything. So you can make rubber balls and butterflies. Can you make money? Well, no. I have to hold the magic, so as soon as I relax, the coins would turn back into thin air, or whatever I made them from. Okay, so it's like coins with strings attached. What you found in this dumpster was actually a bunch of little counterfeit gold coins. I mean... Your pouch full of ether beetles glitters from the inside. One of the little beetles climbs up to the top and lazily flies into the air. Catch it. Oh, hold on there, my little precious. Actually, Elvis, you know what these are? Bank notes. How accurately can you produce a small slip of paper with writing on it? Oh. Oh, I've had this power all my life and I have never thought about bank notes. I bet the banks have. I don't know. Estimates say only 1 in 10,000 people are gifted. Most aren't even aware, and those who do find out can't usually afford a teacher. I was actually taught by forest spirits who were trying to radicalize me into terrorism. All this people like us should not go hungry. And if we do, the people who made us hungry should be taught the error of their ways. The city has played us for fools, and it's time that we fooled them in turn. Okay. Well, it's probably less illegal than killing for hire. But hey guys, if I say cranberry, that means we all kill whoever's giving us trouble, okay? Even if it's a bank teller or something, I'm willing to go down in a blaze of glory on the way to the docks. Oh, man. Don't worry, Mason. Now that we have magic powers, I bet Elvis can summon a hurricane or something. Uh, no. But with just these little beetles, I could blind people or grow a strawberry bush. Great. Maybe someone will be allergic to strawberries. Personally, I'd rather die a bank robber than live as someone's Wookiee. Here, here. Man. The eyes have it. Lead on, Larry. All right, I take everyone down to the bank using that map that I stole. You guys wait outside. I'm going to go in, scope the place out, wait for someone to flash a checkbook. Okay. The bank is as lavish as the city. The ceiling is held aloft with thick columns decorated in plated gold at the bases. There's a relief painting carved up there, and it looks as elegant as any church you've ever been in. When you sit down in one of the nice leather chairs, a banker approaches you. Excuse me, sir, can I help you today? Yes, I was just wondering if I could look at your paperwork for loan options. I see. And what kind of loan might you be applying for? Well, I'm really just getting a feel for the possibilities right now, but Mr. Magic Tony approached me about the sale of his prototype airship. He explains it's going for about two million gold. <laughs> two million gold? Good heavens! Yes, he felt that the sale should go to someone of his old connections. But we haven't even done the proper appraisals yet, and gods know the tax situation is just going to be a nightmare. 
Oh, well, I wasn't aware you were personally acquainted with the benevolent suggester himself. Well, I'll go and fetch some paperwork right away. Do you have an account with us? I was going to inquire about that next, but for now I'd simply like to get my ducks in a row. Oh, yes. Of course, sir. He leaves and comes back with a binder full of papers. Thank you. I'll have a look at these in my own time, if you don't mind. Ah, oh, yes, of course. Don't hesitate to ask if you have any questions. He goes back to his desk and watches you with excitement. This is going to be a big sale. All right. Dottle over the paperwork until someone comes in and flashes their wallet or a checkbook or something. Eventually, a guy with a fur top hat walks in. He goes to the teller, pulls out a checkbook, makes a deposit, and then starts to head back out the front door. Get up. Bump into him. Steal his checkbook. Give me pickpocket. Honestly, I probably should have been doing this when there were crowds around us. We were busy both times. Next time, though. No city is too expensive for a thief who's good enough to act in Vegas. You pull it off. You fish that guy's wallet right out of his pocket. Okay, go to the teller. Excuse me, could I get some forms for opening an account with your bank? I'd like to go over them at home. Of course, sir. She hands you some forms. Okay, go back out and meet with Elvis. Elvis, I need you to make an exact copy of this guy's checkbook. How long can you hold it? Pretty much until I go to sleep. Perfect. Okay, hold that for as long as you can. I gotta go give this guy his wallet back. Tony, I run after that guy. Excuse me, sir. You dropped your wallet. Ooh. Oh my! How embarrassing! Ah, uh, don't worry. I've done it before myself. I know it's such a pain having to call the bank and tell them you lost it. I'm glad I caught up to you. <coughs> oh, aren't you the sweetest thing? Thank you so much. He takes the wallet back. And when he thinks you're not looking, he checks his wallet to see if he stole anything. Oh, you've been robbed all right, sucker. Okay, Elvis. We're gonna need a few supplies and a few alchemy ingredients. We're also gonna need a place to lie low for a few hours that doesn't have our name on it. How am I supposed to do all that? You used to be an assassin, didn't you? Yeah, I assassinated a foreman, and then I assassinated a spirit. And after that, I just kept killing for money. Usually if you throw a hatchet, it works pretty good. I'm an outlaw in the countries of Barthen, Kohlhart, and Western Tolkia, by the way. I also have a lot of enemies in Alvarion, but those killings were state-sanctioned. Okay, so you don't know poisons? I know how to kill people. I know how much killing is worth, and who pays for that kind of thing in at least three countries. If it was legal in Elvarion, why'd you leave? I was just an enforcer for landlords. I used to walk in a place, take someone's goldfish out of the bowl, and step on it. And I'd announce, I'm here on behalf of Lord Silvius. But in a system like that, what do you suppose happens when Lord Silvius skips on your paycheck? Jeez, Elvarion sucks. I didn't transfer to de Blasio because I loved his personality. He killed people's goldfish? If somebody fails to pay off a debt, the head of family can be executed by a representative of the state. The state can show leniency if it chooses, but the executioner doesn't get to choose. I was a saint for killing the fish first. After the head of family is executed, the state can choose to sell as many family members into slavery as is necessary to pay the debt. They could stop me at any time by coming up with the money at the last minute, but the kind of chases that they would lead us on. Oh, Paul, you feel bad for them hearing about it, but there are no good people in the world. Some of those guys I would kill again. One of them spent the debt money just setting up traps in his house and buying wild dogs. I could see that being me. I would be that guy. I mean, yeah, I would totally do the same in his place, but it is a little frustrating when it's my job to deal with him, and I was obligated to pay rent too, you know. Again, I left for a reason. Let's stay on task, please. You may not be a chemist, but I am, and I think we need to visit a clothing store. For the chemistry? Just shut up and follow me. Tony, I find a clothing store on the map and lead everyone to it. You find a store called Dashing Haberdashery. You go in and see that it's full of designer clothing worthy of nobility. The shopkeep greets you at the bell. Hello and welcome to Dashing Haberdashery. I'm Harry Haberdash, pioneer in haberdashery and finery alike. What can I do for you fine gentlemen? Well... I am looking for something trendy, but that's going to tell people I'm an important figure. And if I can get a side of martial protection, that would be lovely. Oh, for you, I've got just the thing. He pulls out a gentleman's coat and pants with a gold interior and a vibrant red vest, also with a gold interior. Lately, I've been working on a concept called Oricalcum Silk. You see, the fibers of these jackets are woven from silk produced by Oricalcum spiders and coal heart. More resistant than silk, but still as flexible as a dream. These suits can stop a bullet. I assume that must still leave a lot of damage if they can bend. Well, they're not meant for the battlefield. It's for everyday wear, for the paranoid gentleman on the go. Very popular with Elvarion leaders these days. Never mind, my friend Paul. 
These'll do nicely. I'm especially fond of the cranberry color. Usually I try to pitch it as a red wine. It sounds more classy, but uh, but have you ever seen the cranberry fields in Tokiev? Oh, that is natural beauty right there. Guys, I said cranberries. I kick the shopkeep. Okay, roll attack. Me too. Smash the guy with the hammer. Uh, okay, I stab the guy. Well, there's no chance he'll survive all that. He clutches at your shirt as he slides down to the floor. <laughs> oh, why? Was it something about the cranberries? I look him in the eyes. Never talk to me about Tolkiev. <laughs> What's your deal with Tolkiev? Nothing. I just wanted him to die thinking it was his fault somehow. Anyway, we got a lot of work to do. Paul and Mason, the two of you take that body upstairs and toss it in the bathtub before it makes any more of a mess. Fill the bathtub up with some water. One of you, go get some ice. Lowry, where are we supposed to get ice? You think the people who live here don't have arcane ice boxes, Paul? Go to his kitchen. All right, jeez. Elvis, you stay here and clean up the blood on the floor. They said they have a mugger, but they never catch the guy. At best, I want them to think a pinball city class mugging took place here. And at worst, I want it to be a red herring that keeps them busy until we're out of town. I guess I'll get some vinegar. Tony, most clothes are treated with a variety of different chemicals. Bromides, formaldehyde, dyes, all kinds of stuff. Rummage around this guy's cabinet for a bit and see if I can find anything like that. Well, those cabinets are locked. But the guy had his keys on him, so you let yourself into his workshop and find a bunch of chemicals. Great. I'm gonna look for a canister of some kind of strong acid. Make a dilution with it and throw it in a few sturdy buckets. That's for the body. Next, I'm gonna whip together a bit of stuff to forge some banknotes. I guess, give me alchemy and forgery. There and there. You have a lot of skills. Yeah, learning how to fight takes up a lot of your brain. This is more useful. I copied the checks that Elvis had. Make sure the numbers are all correct, and don't miss anything. Before I start working on that, take the acid buckets up to the bathtub. All right, Paul, Mason, heads or tails? I flip a silver coin. Heads! You win! Take your swords and carve the meat off the body. Throw it in the pails. It should dissolve while I'm busy. Paul, heads or tails? Uh, tails. You win! You didn't even flip a coin! It's because you're the only one with a big hammer, so you're the only player. I want you to take the bones and smash them into little bits. Elvis, do you know how to bake? No. You can grow a strawberry bush with magic, but you can't bake a casserole. How are those two things related? How often do you need to grow a strawberry bush compared to cooking for yourself as a bachelor? I get lost in the wilderness surprisingly often. All right, whatever. Just make some pancakes or something from the flour in this guy's kitchen. Mix the little bits of bone in there so they're hard to spot. I don't want to make bone pancakes. Do you know how to make bone French toast? All right, fine. It just seems a little on the crazy side. Sane men don't have to hide bodies. Sane men are the only ones who have to hide bodies. No, wait, actually, you were right. I got that backwards. Anyway, I'm going to go forge some checks. You guys do that stuff I told you. Well, guys, uh, Elvis can attest that we've killed a lot of people in his campaign, but uh, this has to be the most oddly meticulous and horrible. You're welcome. If you like it, I have a few podcast recommendations for you. No, thank you. You get to your gruesome work while Lowry starts making forge checks. Oh, God. (laughs) Why do I I have to do the intestines? Here, just uh, put them in the bucket. I'm going to throw up. Guys, the batter's ready. You got those tiny bone shards yet? (laughs) Eventually, the body is dissolved into buckets. Lowry's done with the checks, and Elvis has a bunch of horror story pancakes from hell. Is this really better than Alvirion? Well, nobody set wild dogs on me. Yet. I'll get back to you. This is definitely getting to an unacceptable level. What, you guys don't have the stomach for more hardcore crime? I bet Pinball City's Underground does this all the time. And they have law degrees. What a city where even your criminals are overqualified. Well, the best part about all this is that we're going to throw it away, so you don't have to look at it anymore. Good. I was thinking while we were up here doing terrible things, it's lucky this guy didn't have a family or anything. Oh, trust me. They would have been terrible. Okay, Tony, I go through the man's kitchen cabinets and arcane fridge, empty the liquid out of any jars, and pour the buckets of human slurpee into them, then toss them in the garbage bag. Throw away all this old and moldy food in there, too. 
Elvis, you toss your pancakes in the bag. I'm going to toss mine again. So we just going to throw this all in a dumpster and leave it? I don't like the idea of leaving evidence close to the scene, especially with the cops raising the dead. Let's just take it to the side and toss it over. If you're going to do that, why'd I have to make evil pancakes? Which would you rather explain to people? That you made too many pancakes and had to throw them away, or that you have a garbage bag full of human body parts? You know, parts of this plan only work because it's too crazy for anyone to guess. I feel like you're not on a line of criminal genius so much as outside the reasoning of any rational person. I'm throwing away pancakes. Also some old pickles, some old milk, a few jars of strawberry slurry or something. Oh no, jam. Call it jam. Make sure the bathtub is clean. Put on your shoes. Let's go on a garbage run. When's the last time you saw someone wandering around town with a garbage bag full of pancakes? I put on that suit that Harry was trying to sell me. I guess I grabbed something too. I guess I'll try to make an ensemble with what I have. Like, put the leather queer ass over a dress shirt, get some slacks, pick out some nice shoes, I'm battle ready. But also prom ready. I don't deserve nice clothes. None of us deserve nice clothes. I deserve nice clothes, you don't know me. You guys head out the door dressed in finery, and down you go toward the edge of the city. Most people do give you your space, but you do get a few looks since you're hauling around a random bag of garbage. Hey, could you guys grab any garbage bags sitting out in the street or anything? Most of it's bound to be full of valuable stuff anyway. Okay. And now you guys are hauling around a whole bunch of stolen garbage, which is gross, but technically not stealing, actually. If I catch anyone in the middle of throwing things away, try and stop them. Hey, hey, what do you got there? Don't throw it away, it's good stuff! Oh, now you got ice cream all over this busted tire! Thanks, buddy! You guys arrive at the docks, and as luck would have it, Captain Peaches spots you. Oh, Elvis! What are you doing back here? Did you decide to take up Tony on the airship offer? No, Peaches. We're homeless. But we realize the trash here is really valuable, and all the bugs in it are really pretty, so I'm collecting them. Then why are you down here? All right, Mason, open up your bag. What do you got? Uh... Looks like old food, a broken pair of calipers, and there's a giant sword about twice as tall as you. I... I guess... I I don't know how this was in the bag, but here it is. Oh, I know what that is. They call that a horse chopping sword. In theory, they're meant to be used on cavalry. How'd it get in the bag? Ah! I recognize that! It's not a horse chopping sword! Smithsonian was working on a concept for some of the larger, stronger mercenaries. He called it a three-handed sword, because it takes a person and a half to lift it. You can call it whatever you want, but in practice they're usually decorative, or just to show off the smith can do it. A spear does the job a lot better. Can the bag hold other unusually long items? I try to stick one of my regular swords in it. Your sword pokes through the other end of the bag. Okay. Guys, we haven't slept in a day, and we've been through a lot. I don't think I know what reality is anymore. Just throw the big sword over the side. It's obviously worthless. Oh, oh, oh hold on there. You can't just toss it over the side like that. We have rules about garbage, and dumping like that is strictly prohibited. Well, it's a floating city. There's no way you have space for a landfill. Ha! Ha! Shows what you know. The city is hollow. We throw all the trash inside. You're telling me you built an entire city made of gold and marble on a hollow frame. It's also built with magic. Most important part of the engineering plan, you know. Well, we're here at the edge now. Just throw it over. A man in a suit with a badge comes walking around the corner. He doesn't seem to be in any hurry. He comes to a stop in front of you. Captain Peaches, a pleasure, sir. Are these gentlemen going through your garbage? No, sir. However, we were just having a conversation about the garbage. I see. Well, I've had a few reports of men disturbing the peace and stealing garbage and accosting strangers, so, uh, I see I've reached the end of the trick. Garbage doesn't accost anything. It's garbage. It's free. They were just picking out the good bits and discussing throwing the rest over the edge. I see. You were, were you? And did you throw anything over? I was gonna throw this sword. Unless you want to buy it. It fits in places you wouldn't think it would go. You know what? I will. I will buy it. I'll buy it for 25 gold. Really? That's right. Yeah, really. Hand it over. Okay. Now, now the ticket for illegal dumping is 25 gold, so we're even. I'll take this somewhere it won't hurt anyone. And all debts are settled. Before you think about throwing anything else overboard, consider taking a visit to the city dump. Yeah, and I bet we're the only ones in town who can't afford that ticket. How much does it cost to go to the dump? Ten gold? Twenty gold? Just to throw stuff away? Yes, we're tourists. So it's not paid with our tax money, and I guess it's not free. 
Well, I suppose it's only 20 silver. Still about a week's wages for me. How do we get to the dump? Actually, hold on, I have a map. I checked the map. Oh, you got a map. You're lucky. The guy that sells those maps got killed recently by some armed tourists. Well, my boss gave this to me before he ditched us here. Fleur de Blasio? Maybe you've heard of him. I have not. You know, after we revived him, he did give us a description. Say, I don't suppose you boys would mind if I had a look at what else you got in those bags, Man, we're gonna be here all day. Did Magic Tony hire you? Because I am gonna give you such a bad review. Oh, you're gonna tell Magic Tony, are you? They, uh, they actually do know Tony, sir. He and Elvis are old friends. Uh, they went to the North Pole together. That's right. And I made Tony sleep in the latrine the whole way there. I am Tony's boss. If I give the word, I can make stupid things happen. Stupider things than what Tony would normally ask for. I got more stupid ideas than the stupidest person that you've ever met. Trying to make me sleep in a latrine would be pretty stupid. I might not do it. Oh, you don't even begin to know stupid. I will talk Tony into making a law that everyone but you has to sleep in a latrine. Then it'll be your job to enforce that law. I'll say it's a bright new standard for the city, and I'll give you a raise in broad public. And everyone will think that you and me are good friends. Oh, and it'll only get stupider from there. All right. I deal with a lot of stupid, but that is more stupid than I'm ready to deal with for now. Let's steer clear of each other and, uh... You have a nice day. He leaves. And how about you, Peaches? Can I make some changes to the dock operations and then throw you a parade? Because I will. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Peaches shuffles away. Okay, let's just throw that stuff over the edge. Wait a minute. For what? We're basically home free. I know I sounded sure, but I actually have, like, no control over Tony. That lie has legs for tonight and probably no further. Well, then... Now's a good time to break the law a little further. No, because that's when they ask Tony if it's okay, and he'll just defer responsibility to the cop that hates us. Let's not cross that line, and let's not give the cop any reason to ask. Hey, since we're having this conversation about stuff we shouldn't do, can we go back and not kill the haberdasher? Sorry, bud, that ship has sailed. Yeah, but I really want it not to be. Just check the map and see where the dump access is. It can't be that much trouble. All right, fine. Check the map. There's only one access zone in the center of the city. There's only one? It feels fitting the city should be centered around garbage. All right, let's go. You guys make your way from the edge of town to the center of town, carrying along your garbage bags full of who knows what kinds of things, and things people wouldn't want to know about. It could be more swords or a partially eaten gourmet meal. In fact, Mason, you feel something squirming in your bag. Ah, I slammed the bag down on the sidewalk until it stops moving. Whatever's in there starts thrashing around the first time you hit the sidewalk, but stops moving entirely a few swings in. I am not having this today. I think I saw that bag come from outside a pet store. What, did they just throw away cute little bunny rabbits at the pet store? Is that what you're implying? And I wouldn't put it past Pinball City. Everybody here is a perfection-obsessed nut. Though in fairness, it was probably more like an endangered animal. Well, then I saved it from this cruel world that we're living in. Come on, let's go to the trash. You guys get to the town center and find it's like a large park. They got trees and carefully cultivated topiaries. In the very middle, there's a small hutch. Outside, there's a sign that says, Elevator. Goes to anywhere. Is this the dump? Is it? The map says, Dump, Beach, and Others. I guess we get to the dump and the beach from here. Do they dump garbage on the beach? I thought we were in the middle of the ocean. I don't know, Mason. It doesn't say on the map. I knock on the door and then let myself in. Hello? We're here with garbage? There's a guy in a bellhop uniform sitting in a folding chair. It looks like a particularly spacious elevator. The only other thing in the room is a panel with a complex variety of buttons, knobs, and flywheels. The elevator man looks up from his magazine. Garbage? You mean you're not beach pass holders? I hate everything about your society. The guy looks kind of stunned. He points to himself. Do I look in charge of our society? I don't care. Someone needed to hear that. If someone else comes in here, you tell them I said it. <laughs> I hope I don't look like the town crier either, because I'm not in charge of spreading do news. Do you go to the garbage dump or do you not? I don't want to pick apart what strange role you have in this society. I don't care if you go to the beach or if you're the best darn whatever you are in the world. For the best people at everything, you're all the dumbest people I've ever met. Can you do anything useful? <laughs> well, well, 
Normally, yes, but uh, I think it's my lunch break right about now. I don't see no sandwich, Sparky. He pulls out a sandwich from under his folding chair. I don't see no good sandwich. What is that, tuna? That's like half... That's not even sandwich. How much do you get paid anyway? A golden hour? How do you live here, man? He eats his sandwich very slowly and glares at you. Hey, 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 that's all right, Elvis. I agree with you. You know, guy, my friend is telling you something that you and everyone needs to hear. You suck. Your city sucks. Your vendors suck. The prices suck. The drainage system sucks. Marble can't be drainage. You guys all suck. Come on, Elvis. You tell the You're just like the, the truth. marble drains. You're never going to hold up. You tell the people the truth and they turn their backs on you. I want to go home. I know, Mason. None of us like it here. I should go back to my family and beg for forgiveness. Offer to be disowned and, and work as a house cleaner. Oh, come on, man. Everyone knows not to hire a thief as a house cleaner. I've made so many poor life choices. You know what? We're not going to wait. I go in the elevator and I start flipping knobs and throwing switches. Come on, guys. Get in here. Hey, hey, stop that. You don't know what you're doing. I know precisely what I'm doing. I'm being very bad or mediocre at operating this elevator. He tries to shove you out of the way. I shove him back. Mason, Paul, jump on him. Huh. Jump on him. Elbow first. Poverty pile driver. Is this a cranberry moment? We are already going to the dump. We can make this work. No, duvet. This is a non-lethal apprehension. That's the code word. Duvet. Duvet. Non-lethal. Oh, I, I am really glad we have a code word for that. This team is going in the right direction, finally. Hey, da! Hey, get off me! Are you guys crazy? Hey, why are you being so crazy? You know we got amazing shrinks here in Pinball City. Why, why do you gotta be crazy? We can't afford it! I throw the switch! You throw a big, obvious-looking switch. The doors close and the elevator hums to life. It sounds like it's charging up or something. Hey, where are you sending us? I don't know! If only the guy who ran the elevator wasn't on lunch break, we could avoid this. How much does the elevator cost anyway? There has to be a price to dump garbage too, right? Uh, it was 20 silver. Paul, eat his lunch. No lunch break for you. I steal his sandwich and I eat it right in front of him. It is the best sandwich you have ever eaten. You're pretty sure it's not tuna. It tastes like a slice of heaven. Oh, God. It's so good. I start crying. The elevator lurches, the bell dings, and the door slides open. You're suspended over a pit of magma in what appears to be an underground cave. The heat is excruciating and fills the room. Where in the what? Hey, get out of the way! Get out of the way! You guys aren't trained to operate an elevator. I stand aside and then kick the guy out the elevator door. <laughs> he sinks and is gone. Okay, guys, quick. We're at the dump. This is the dump. Throw away the trash. I toss the garbage bags. Down they go. Whoosh. No more evidence. Okay, close the door, throw a bunch more nozzles and switches, then pull the big lever. The elevator revs up again. <laughs> Ding! The door opens up, and you're looking out into a horrifying ethereal landscape. Tormented forms are swirling in the air. Okay, that's wrong. Close the doors again, flip a few more switches. You go to close the doors, but then a spectral hand reaches in and holds them open. A figure steps in. It begins to materialize. You recognize the face of the elevator guy. Jeez, you guys are really and totally lost. It's a lucky thing you wound up here. Now move aside. What are you doing? Get back in the volcano where you belong. Are, are you dead? Oh, right, yeah. I forget this is your guy's first ghost. You know, you could at least have the decency to rattle some chains and try to do a good haunting. At least make the room colder. He kind of stands inside of Elvis and then starts flipping switches and pressing buttons. He yanks down on the level and the elevator powers up. <laughs> Ding! The doors slide open and you guys are positioned over a dark room. Horizontally, gravity pulls you down and you fall out of the elevator into a heap of something which gives way beneath you and you start rolling down in. If you want to visit the dump so bad, here you go! Behind you, you guys hear a vroom, 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 and then nothing. You roll the rest of the way down the hill and come to a stop, covered in stuff that feels greasy, having been jabbed by several pokey things, and it feels like you got bits of paper stuck all over you. Can anyone see in darkness? My mother's shield can emit a soft light in darkness. Then your shield lights up, and there's nothing but trash as far as you can see. You can't find the ceiling or walls. Well, it looks like we made it to the dump.
As your eyes adjust to the dim light, you can see soft blue glows here and there all among the trash. All these creatures are so special, and they have so much unrealized potential. Yet look where they wound up. Mason, they don't have that much potential. You get one spell out of them and then they die. Uh -huh. So what do we do now, Elvis? We just eat trash and live as trash? I really hate that my victims all come back from the dead in this city. I know, right, Lowry? Normally it takes at least a week for them to start haunting you. Elvis, how many times have you been haunted by the dead? Uh, it happens all the time. Usually it's whoever annoyed me the most. If I killed them because they deserved it, they always come back. Well, the elevator guy went right back to operating the elevator. You think we're going to get arrested? Like someone's going to come down here and arrest us? He's an ageless demigod with a presumed infinite power over the elevator now. He might not even press charges. Well, what do we do now? Not to worry, Paul. I've been stranded someplace stupid in every country I've ever been in. Check it out. Tony, I catch a jewel beetle and then use it to grow a strawberry bush. With a few gestures and magic words, the beetle disintegrates to dust, and a strawberry bush sprouts fully grown from the trash. Okay, what about water? I catch another jewel beetle and grow a barrel cactus. This time, a barrel cactus shoots up next to the strawberry bush. It then falls over into the muck. Well, it looks like your cactus didn't make it. I know how you feel. Oh no, the ground's too soft. Cacti have a shallow root system. So, we're gonna drink cactus water? No, Lowry, you should never drink plain cactus water unless your life depended on it. Cactus water is actually very alkaline, and it tends to be toxic to people. Plus, it could give you diarrhea, which is going to achieve the exact opposite desired effect. Well, what if I wanted to kill me? If you want to die, Lowry, we could just kill you. I want to feel alive while I die. Let me feel the pain. Oh, you weirdo. Tony, I cut open the cactus and try to keep as much jelly water as I can. Then I catch another beetle and purify the water. The water lights up and turns from mostly jelly into pure water. And there we go. Okay, what about proteins? Maybe we could catch some rats? I grow a peanut bush. Magic and who? Peanut bush. Okay, truth be told, strawberries, cactus, water purification, and peanuts are all I can do. So, we're still gonna die in the long run. But this is a whole lot better than nothing, and the clean water is winning a huge part of the survival battle. So you learned all this casually? I starve in the woods all the time. You guys ought to learn it too. All my friends starve in the woods. Why? Well, it's hard for the authorities to chase you deep in the woods. A big part of me thought that the worst of my thieving and running would end with the family swords. My dad was right about everything. He said this is where I'd end up. Homeless and living in the trash. And I'm a little frustrated he was right. Ah, Your dad must have just been talking from experience. I don't know if I should be offended by that. On the bright side, if we need a little food variety, at least we have pancakes. I hate you, Lowry. Actually, we probably ought to eat them now, before they go bad. What we probably ought to do is get together some stuff and cobble together a temporary settlement so that we have a place to meet and go back to. Do any of you guys know how to navigate? I thought we'd been over this. Nobody knows how to navigate. Hell, shoot. I don't know how to navigate either. Okay, I guess we'll build some shelter, light a fire, and then explore out only so far that we don't lose sight of the fire. That'll be good enough for now. I know how to navigate. How do you guys not know how to navigate? He means like navigating by the stars or with a compass. There are no stars and none of us has a compass. Yeah, it makes navigation really hard and I already don't know how to do it. Just identify a landmark and then travel with reference to sure. it. Sure, yeah, gee, which one? That giant mound of amorphous garbage over there or that one over there? That is why we're building a fire. Tony, I start gathering up stuff that I can stack to make a few decent lean-tos. Look for something flammable that I can turn into tinder. Just rummaging around, you find some decent beds, bed sheets, some furniture, and a large tent about the size of a living room. You find a bottle of turpentine to get a fire started. From your perspective, there's nothing wrong with any of this stuff, except how dirty it is. Well, this has been the easiest time I've ever had with setting up a camp. Normally, I gotta dig a poop hole, but somebody threw away a perfectly good toilet. But there's no running water. Well, we don't intend to be here forever. All right, Tony, I start a fire. And it's pretty easy when flammable chemicals are involved. All right, now Mason, you said you know how to navigate. Yes, Elvis, I know how to not get lost like an idiot. Don't say that, because you're going to get lost like an idiot. I'm not going to get lost like an idiot. Tony, I march off into the dump without even looking where I'm going. Does anyone follow him? I want to stay by the fire. I can see where I'm going here. I'm not going anywhere. If you get lost, you have to stay put. Mason's the one who's going to get lost. Do you know where we are? I don't. I'm lost. I'm staying put. Stupid guys. Stupid thinking I'm gonna get lost. You just stay in your fancy tent with your evil pancakes made out of human. Give me a navigation roll to not get lost. I get lost. So you do. 
You wander away from the fire into the dark, get disoriented, and have no idea where you are. Damn it! If my brothers could see me now, they'd make so much fun of me. Fall down on my knees. God! How was I supposed to accept that I was destined for mediocrity? I wanted more! Was it hubris? Was wanting more? More than I deserved? I couldn't have known without trying! You spot movement somewhere on top of a hill. It looks like an enormous animal. I get out my three swords. I am still Mason Two Swords, gosh dang it. And as it turns out, if I die, I'll just come back haunting the swords. You can break my spirit, world. You can break my swords, but you can't kill my spirit, I think. The shadowy figure speaks. He says, Oh, hey man, I'm not here to kill anyone. Throw my swords on the ground. Well, why not? Because I don't even know you. Look, you seem to be going through some hard stuff. I don't mean to be rude, but uh, you didn't start a fire, did you? No. My friend made the fire. And they're watching it. I can't even see you. Who's there? Oh, sorry. I have really good dark vision, and I forget other people don't. The figure steps closer to you, when you make out a massive man-like figure with the head of a bull. It appears you're now face to bovine face with a minotaur. Oh. Hello. My name's Matt. Are you, like, the guardian of the trash or something? Oh, no, no, no. I'm in charge of sorting and incinerating the trash. Of course, I'm the only one doing it, so, uh, tends to pile up on me. He sort of motions around at all the garbage. I'm supposed to incinerate it, but it's not supposed to burn on its own. Yeah, well, it's a controlled fire, Matt. My friends lit it so that I could find my way back to them if I got lost, but now I can't see the fire, so I I am lost. Oh, then you're in luck. I can see the smoke from right here. I guess I can lead you back. Sure, uh, but when you do, could you tell them that I found you, not the other way around? It'd be hard not to find you with how you were shouting, but uh, sure, I'll keep the secret. Matt leads you back to your grounds campsite. The rest of the group, you don't have all too long to react before Mason appears over a hill with a large figure walking casually behind him. Mason! Don't move. There is a giant animal behind you. Yeah, this is Matt. He lives here in the dump. Hello, everybody. Say, is this where you live? (laughs) I guess that makes us neighbors. Sorry I didn't bring any housewarming gifts. Uh, I didn't realize someone was living here. Matt's harmless. He just wants to make sure we're not setting any dangerous fires. Not currently. What is a minotaur doing in the dump? Where else would you keep a minotaur? Excuse me, that's a little insensitive. I'm just saying, not everyone has labyrinth money. And and compared to like a junkyard dog, I mean, one's more intelligent than the other. Actually, I'm pretty sure Pinball City does have labyrinth money. Look, I, I think we're off on the wrong foot. My name's Matt. I am a minotaur, but uh, I'm actually employed here, not imprisoned. Well, that's fine. We're looking for a way out of here. Ooh, are you lost? No! Mason is not lost. None of us are lost. We know exactly where we are. Everything is fine. Yes. None of us are lost. Everything is fine. When we say that we're lost, we just mean lost like existentially. We we want to shake up from being so completely in control and exactly where we want to be. Right, guys? Okay, cool. I guess I can feel that. It's nice to get a change now and then. I guess, uh, we're neighbors, so how would you guys like to come to my house for dinner? I didn't bring a casserole with me, but uh, I can still invite you to one. Yes, absolutely. We would love a casserole. It has been too long since we've had a nice casserole. Thank you, Matt. Okay, great. Uh, Say, I tell you what. I know the lay of the land so well. Uh, Let me loan you this. You can give it back to me when you get to my house. Matt hands you a compass. That there compass points to the magical center of the city, which is the pinball the city is balanced on. My house is built right on top of it, so uh, just walk in the direction the compass is pointing, and you'll have no problem getting to my house. Okay, thanks. I always knew where the magical center of the city was anyway, because actually I'm magical, you know? I have magic powers. Oh, that's real cool. Okay, well, uh, I got an informed wife to expect visitors, so I'll see you guys in a few hours. Okay, thanks. The Minotaur trudges over the hill, and he's gone. Guys, what the heck? I thought we were trying to get out of here. I don't want the only guy who lives in the dump with us to think that we don't know our way around. Yeah, I'm with Paul. I don't want to look stupid. Well, we're all going to look stupid. Does anyone know what time it is now? Or what time dinner is supposed to be? Yeah, it's when we get hungry. We haven't stopped to really eat anything since we got to Pinball City. I'm hungry right now. Uh, dang. I guess my internal clock is a little messed up. Do you think we have time to sleep? I don't care what you guys do. I'm going to fill up on peanuts and strawberries and go to bed. Oh my god. Okay, fine. 
I'll set a magical alarm clock for like four hours. Really? You have a magical alarm clock? All your magic has been pretty cool so far, but that sucks. Yeah, well, when your survival depends on getting up at the right time of day after walking for 12 hours, you wouldn't think so. You guys get a quick four-hour rest before Elvis' alarm clock goes off. Uh, man, do we have to go see the Minotaur? I am still tired. Yeah, I bet he cooks a crappy casserole. Gets all his hair in it. Okay, c- guys, we can't just choose to die down here in the dump to avoid socialization, which, by the way, you set up. Can't we, though? We can flake out on him without looking dumb. It'll just click. No, we, we cannot! I, get up! Come on, get up! Elvis rouses the party and gets you guys marching. Following the compass, which allegedly points toward the Pinball City Pinball, it turns out you must be pretty close to it, because after only 15 minutes of walking, you find a sort of trash valley, at the bottom of which is a two-story home with a white picket fence. The backyard is lit with tacky tiki torches, and you can see the Minotaur cooking something on a grill. He also has a golden retriever playing in the yard. Oh my god, he lives in a suburbanite castle. All right, all right, everybody just be cool. Pretend your parents took you to soccer practice and and fill your pockets with any kind of packaged food that you can find. Middle class marks are the easiest. Don't tell me how to do my business, Elvis. They've got expendable income, but they're afraid of the future. If you can't work with that, you can't work with anything. Listen, the only mark that we need is on a map that shows us how to get out of here, okay? Don't screw that up and get us killed. Fine. Have fun being poor. Matt the Minotaur sees you and waves you guys down. Hey guys, you were a little early. Man, we could have slept in. Well, Matt, we were just so excited to meet a new neighbor. Well, come on down. You want a sausage and a bun? Yes. All right, help yourself. Yes. The Minotaur's dog jumps on you when you open the fence. He tries to lick your face. Matt grabs it and pulls him off of you. Oh, sorry about that. Down boy. He gets excited with strangers. We don't see many new faces. Yes, move. Thanks. I take two sausages in either hand. They're still hot and burn your hands. You, uh... You want a plate for those? No! I shove them both in my mouth and pick up two more. I'll grab a plate and then load up on, like, five sausages all at once. Start shoveling bottles of ketchup and stuff into my jacket. If I find a jar of pickles, just take the entire thing. Hey, give me a pickle! No, get your own. I found these. Whoa, I should have cooked more food. The back door slides open and a female minotaur steps out, carrying a plate full of chips. She looks very pretty, except for her horrible cow head. Oh, guys, I'd like you to meet my wife, Mina. A pleasure to meet you. She does home real estate normally. You know, you wouldn't believe the commissions you get on Pinball City properties. It feels like there's an opportunity around every corner in this city. Start grabbing chips off the plate and start shoveling them into my pockets. Try and push Lowry aside. Hey, you're not even eating them. Let me have a couple. Get off their free chips. I'll still have them when we get home. I'll, I'll just set these down. So, what brings you guys to the, uh, uh, the dump? Opportunities? Where'd you get the sausages? Oh my god. We go shopping topside on the weekends. Those are some of Pinball City's finest. Ah, I regret burning off my taste buds now. Lowry, move! You move. Yeah, we're kind of new to Pinball City, so we're not used to the amazing flavors of all the food yet. Oh, well that makes sense. Oh, you poor things. I completely misjudged you. Hey, have you guys ever considered investing? Shut up, Lowry! Well, I do have a Roth IRA, so... Uh, hey, would you guys like to see the inside of the house? Yes. Oh, gee, I I don't know, dear. I I haven't really cleaned the place yet. It's fine. The house looks great. Let me in your house. I haven't vacuumed all week. It might be really bad if they have allergies. Real quick, I I just want to show them the trophies. Oh, of course you have trophies. He brings you into his living room, and his daughter has the trophies. She's got them for virtually everything, and he's got pictures of her all over the wall. This is my daughter, Mandy. She couldn't be here. She's in college right now, dual majoring in law and arcane engineering with a minor in navigation. She's on her college clipper racing team, so she pretty much knows her way up and down an airship. Uh, And she's strong as an ox. (laughs) Fascinating. You must be so proud. Oh, I really am. I am. And guess what? She's actually looking to join an adventuring group. She's going to graduate next week and is eager to see the world. Of course, we worry, but uh, she got herself a loan for a small airship and has high hopes. Of course, we don't know anyone to travel with her. Yeah, adventuring sucks. You can't hardly afford anything and your employer can drop you on a dime. Just to save dimes. You know what her dream really is? Her school taught her recently about how Magic Tony came to build Pinball City. And she'd really like to travel with the expedition team that went to the North Pole with him. Oh, we know one of those guys. Really? Who? 
Captain Peaches. He stole the airship after they got there. That's not how my daughter tells it to me. She explained that Tony found the city's pinball there, and the pinball city came right afterward. That the ship's captain doesn't even come up. Huh. After he the what? what he found the what? Yeah, after he found the magic pinball at the North Pole. Tony will pinball city into existence. Have you not heard the history of the pinball? So the, he's that what he found at the North Pole? That's what my daughter says. The whole city's floating on top of the thing and named after it. It's not just decorative, you know. Well, Tony! <laughs> oh, 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 I bet! Oh, oh! Can you, can you excuse me for a minute? I go and I gather up the guys. What's up? Okay, I just learned that Tony wandered off at the North Pole not to go die in the cold like he rightfully should have because that's what, that's what we were doing, but to find the magic artifact that powers this entire city! Powers it how? I assume with magic, Paul! You're the one with all the magic theory books you tell me! The point is... The point is, it rightfully belongs to me. And by extension, all of us. What does it do? Grant's wishes? Hang on. Hey, Matt, what'd you say the pinball does? The legend says it manifests your desires and makes them real. Okay, thanks! It kills Pinball City and everyone in it, and possibly the whole world. Ah. Uh, Sweet. The whole world? Trust me, you're gonna want to get rid of all of it. I'm not really seeing a profit motive. Lowry, imagine being the guy who destroyed the whole world. Everyone talks about being the person who sells you a bridge, but if you blow up the world, whatever higher power there is is gonna notice. You're gonna be talked about by things outside your mortal conception as the reason the last world went kablooey. And when they build a new world, they're gonna put in rules and name them after you. All right, you got me sold. I'm all about that legacy. Where do I sign? Here's my plan. All right, Paul, I need you and Mason to come with me to Matt's basement. That's as close as we can get to this pinball before the operation starts. Lowry, you just keep the Minotaurs distracted. Get them talking. It doesn't matter what. Can do. Hey, Matt, can I ask you some questions about your lawn? Oh, sure thing. What do you want to know? Actually, it's about your grass. Can you come outside with me for a second? Me and the guys were thinking about investing in our own property value. Hey, Matt, before you go, do you mind if we grab a drink from your fridge? Uh, yeah, sure. There's a few choices in there. Okay, thanks. We'll see you out here in a sec. Come on, friend. Let's talk topiaries. I lead Matt out. He follows you. Well, see, one of the most important things is to get a good breed of magic grass and then plant it in the autumn. See, because it thinks it's outside, it'll still die in the summer heat even if the sun can't reach it. Wow, amazing. All right, guys, let's get to the basement. Tony, we head down. You get to the basement and see it's finished. He's got a pool table and some weight equipment, along with a bathroom. Follow the compass until we're right over the pinball. Mason, pry up the floor. Paul, take your hammer and get cracking. Sweet oblivion, here I come. You pry up the carpet, revealing concrete underneath. Mason, watch the door. If anyone comes down here and they aren't Lowry, hold them as long as you can. Kill them, preferably. Yup, wash the sins away. I am mediocrity incarnate. But in death, all become equal. Glad to see you're finding your spot, bud. I swing the hammer down. You swing the hammer into the concrete with a loud crack. Matt looks up from the conversation with Lowry. Did you hear that? It was probably just someone dumping off a new load of garbage. Now, do you have to water this stuff or no? Give me a conversation roll. No contest. Well, you keep him and his wife talking. At least for a while. Crack, crack, crack. Paul, your brute force plan is working. At least until you hit solid steel. You aren't sure a hammer alone is going to get through it. No, you're forgetting. My hammer is magically enchanted to make armor soft. I'll use the pick end of the hammer to punch holes and then pry up the loose pieces. Oh, I did forget about that. Well, in that case, sparks fly as you mutilate the steel, prying up sections and pieces at a time and hammering them aside. You bash through the top plating and make a small hole leading into the substructure. Can't be much further now. I hop in. Keep us guarded, Mason. I go after Paul. The universe stole my birthright. Now I steal the universe's right to live. Very poetic. Aren't you just a little nervous about this, Elvis? No way. I've wanted to destroy the world for a long time. Man, I, I've met a few people I like, but they always die. I never liked anyone who ever benefited from anything I've ever done. And I've always wished that I could do this. I mean, do you even really know what the pinball's gonna do? If all it does is kills us, it's not like we've got anything else to lose, right? I feel like we can always sink further. No, that's quitter talk. <laughs> I mean, you're right, but let's not quit. Lowry, back with Matt. He looks back towards his house. Hey, your friends have been gone an awfully long time, haven't they? Yeah, Mason probably had to go to the restroom. 
and he's really skittish about going in a stranger's house, so Elvis and Paul are probably stuck on cheerleader duty. Maybe I should make sure they're okay. He starts heading for the house. Oh, that, that's going to embarrass them even worse. You really shouldn't. Matt goes inside and starts looking around for everyone. He checks the living room bathroom. Honey, will you go check upstairs? His wife goes up. Oh, come on. You've never heard Mason fart, but it's like a schoolgirl giggling. He hates it. It's not the impression he wants to leave on you. Yeah, still, it's my house. I, I just want to make sure he's okay. He opens the basement door and starts walking down. Extendo, kick him down the stairs. Well, he's not expecting that. Your extendo boot sends him flying down the stairs, landing directly in front of Mason. This is my full potential! Stab all three swords down into him. That's still a lot of damage, even with only half the swords. Matt grabs at the swords and tries to pull them out. <laughs> oh boy. Shh. It's okay. You're with my dreams now. Are you feeling okay, Mason? Yeah. Just finally seeing my fate out there in front of me. My husband! Mina runs off. That's right, you better run, lady. Mason's gone crazy. She runs, straight into the mantle place where she pulls down a huge battle axe. Oh, shoot. I run down the stairs. Go, 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 Mason. She has a battle axe. But Elvis said to stay here. We'll have an easier time four on one. Go, I run for the hole. I guess I follow Lowry. Elvis and Paul, you guys have finished shimmying down the support girders, down to the point of the inverted pyramid. The pinball should be just below you. Above, you hear two clanks as Mason and Lowry drop onto the top girders. What are you guys doing? We're at the cusp of apotheosis. Or antithesis. I don't know. The lady has an axe. The lady jumps down between Lowry and Mason. Elvis, what do you do? I grab a beetle and I hit her with a blinding flash. Sagwa Sanfa! Okay. Beams of colored light extend from your fingertips, hitting her eyes as she covers her face in pain. Oh, God! Ah! Don't you cretins have better manners than to flash a lady? She grits her teeth and starts frothing at the mouth. <laughs> Mason, your turn. Stab her! You plunge the swords into her thigh, but she barely seems to notice. She only swats blindly at you, swinging the axe at all angles. Lowry, your turn. Extendo kick her off the girders. She's blind and doesn't have much defense. She goes flying down the girders, hitting several on the way down, grunting angrily each time. She lands and immediately starts trying to get up. Paul, your turn. Prepare a block maneuver with my shield. Are you sure? Uh, okay. Uh, she gets to her feet and kneels down. It looks like she's going to charge at you, and the shield probably isn't going to hold. Bring it, lady! Toro! Your daughter's chosen career is a joke! Adventurers amount to nothing! Okay. She lunges at you and not even bothering to try to miss the shield. Good. I don't get out of her way. Your funeral. She makes a direct hit, dealing 24 body just for starters. That's enough to kill a grizzly. How much does your shield handle before it breaks? None of it. If she walks right into it, it bounces it all back. Plus, she doesn't move me at all, which means you can double that damage thanks to the collision. Oh, right. Your shield is magic. Yep. Don't hit mama's baby. Anything the shield intercepts goes right back where it came from. In that case, she pretty much breaks her neck and spine and crumples in a heap in front of you. She hits herself so hard that you can actually feel heat from the crash, as some of the energy has to go somewhere. A shockwave of compressed air washes over you and Elvis. Wow. Good job, Paul. Honestly, if the universe has got to end, you are a pretty cool guy to end it. Well, here's hoping. It's the big moment. I bash the pyramid open. You tear open the bottom of the pyramid. You can see the open air and the ocean far below. The pinball is hovering below, just within reach. There's a magic force field on its sides, preventing anyone from reaching it from the outside, but nothing above it. All right, everybody, gather around. I say we do this together. Everybody get on your stomachs, get situated. We'll all grab the pinball at once. And then the universe ends? Well, I don't exactly know what it'll do, but the Minotaur said that Tony used it to will Pinball City into being. And at the very least, that must mean that we can will it out of existence. I mean, even if it was a multi-step process making Pinball City, I, I bet blowing it all up will be easy. So we all just reach in and wish that Pinball City were gone? Remember, it's like I taught Mason. Find that bit inside you that wants to be rid of Pinball City and the whole world, and then pull it out of yourself through the pinball. Every fantasy that you've ever had about getting back at the world, just pull it on through. The last time I did that, it caused an explosion. That's the idea, you idiot. Oh, right. You guys reach down, and all together, you clasp hold of the pinball. You will with all your might for Pinball City to be no more. The city begins to shake. 
You feel it starting to fall. The pinball glows white hot in your hands. Don't let go! We've almost got it! This is my true destiny! My parents were never getting back together anyway! Are you there, God? It's me, Lowry. This is for all my friends, Universe! For Tychus and Andre! For Mindy and Pop-Tart and Jessica! For Iggy! Mad, mad Iggy! For Grover Cleveland and Elmo Cleveland and Gonzo Cleveland! The whole Cleveland family! I'll see you guys on the other side! Pinball City enters total freefall, and the world blooms into a white light. I'm not sure what should happen next, but it's getting late, and I suppose here's a good place to end it. Ah, man. Well, thanks for the game, Tony. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it was nice meeting everybody. I'll try to think of something. Usually we do these once a week, but Elvis asked me to move the day this time for everybody. Yeah, that's my fault. My schedule's usually pretty tight. Okay, well, I guess, let me know. You guys have a good night. Thanks. Yeah, you too. See you around, Tony. Yeah, see you later. Bye. Bye. Goodbye.